small brown cow. <laughs> oh! The tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> Arsonist had oddly shaped feet. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good enough intro for anybody, huh? Welcome to uh, another episode of To the Fullest. We got Vatican falling on the podcast. <laughs> some uh, some awesomeness. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having us. Fucking killing it. So we were talking about what? Zoolander and fucking sequels, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. going on with that shit, huh? <laughs> so yeah, we were, I was saying uh, this, the fucking sequels suck because uh, the storyline's not there anymore. And we were starting to bring up some other bullshit where they were telling more storyline, like why Terminator 2. Yeah. That was storyline, right? That one worked. That one actually did work. It yeah. was good. It was like, all right, this has a place. you got to have an evolving storyline. If it's just the same jokes and same... Same banter over and over again. It just gets old. Yeah. You know what I just watched was Jeepers Creepers 3 today. Oh, really? And, like, all I, I could think one. the whole freaking movie was, why the fuck are all these scenes happening in broad daylight? <laughs> like, this looks so much cheesier because it's just broad daylight. Yeah, that's, that's scary. That's supposed to be in the middle of uh, the night in a cornfield. Yeah. Where you can't see anything going on. Yeah. It's what all, the fuck? It's all wrong. I was not scared. No? Bullshit. I didn't see the third one. I think I saw the first You're and second one. You're not missing out. Yeah, no. The, I, definitely from the first and the second one, I kind of assumed as much. Well, right. I had to go straight to TV, at least. I don't, I don't think yeah. I even saw Jeeper, Jeepers Creepers 1. That's not what? bad. The one first was one good. wasn't bad. One was good. Yeah. I don't even Do know if I've heard of Do you watch scary movies? Yeah, every now and then. Right. October. What, what was the last thing I watched that was kind of scary? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't that scary, but that house on Haunted Hill, or house, the Haunted House, or Haunted... The house on the hill, the hill, yeah. hill house, or whatever it was. Hill, uh, yeah, I know. There's like there's on Netflix. Haunted there's like a house. series on Netflix. There's a hill. I know what you mean though, because <laughs> yeah. there's like two movies there and the two series movies, on but Netflix. Made a series. I watched that series. That series was pretty good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It wasn't like super scary or anything, but it was mm. enjoyable. That was a good mm. one. What was the last scary movie you watched, Thomas? Yeah. Mm. Recently, The Witch. The was that good? Yeah, oh, dude. Was it good? I forget what actor that is that, that plays the dad, but he's got, like, I, I watched interviews with him just to hear that voice again. <laughs> like, it, it's something you need subtitles on just because, like, Damn. they're speaking, like, old world English. So yeah, yeah, yeah. all that's, jar- like, mixed up, and then his voice is just rocks <laughs> on a on a road, just... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's badass, but it was really well shot. I forget who did that one. I don't know. That's not the one that, like, spells it weird, right? Because there was, like, a witch that, like... No, that's... You know which one I'm talking yeah, yeah. about? No, it was the one um, where they get, like, exiled from their little community and they have to live out on their own. And then, okay. like, a witch steals the baby and then it, yeah, it gets yeah. pretty wild, yeah. I think I it's have cool. heard of that one. And then I think in the end she, like, sells her soul to the devil, which is rad, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm down. I'm watching that shit tonight. Yeah, nice right there. <laughs> we were watching uh, Feast. Have you guys ever seen Feast? I think Feast. I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. It's like a trilogy... And uh, who the fuck? I think Ben Affleck and or Ben Stiller or something like that was like a producer on it with Wes Craven. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. And it's just gore fest. And all three movies were like shot in a row. Nice. So they just like start right where the last last scene in the last movie is the first <laughs> scene in the next movie. And That's it's just cool. tits and gore and just yeah just ridiculous bullshit the most ridiculous gore that you can you can think of. Yeah. Feast. I highly recommend it. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. I think... What was it? Uh, the Rob Zombie one, House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, that shit's tight. Dude, was... that like that was probably the scariest movie, goriest movie I'd ever seen as a kid. Cause it was like I was pretty young. I think I was like sixteen or something when that movie came out. I actually paused that shit for a second. I was like, <laughs> hold on, this ain't real. <laughs> hold up. Yeah, that was a fucked up movie, yeah. man. Back and... in its time, dude, that shit was crazy. Dude, and yeah. the Devil's Rejects afterwards, yes. man. Yes. I gotta see the fucking uh, the third one. It's good. Like I, oh, I have it, I have I it sitting it. there waiting, but I, I haven't. I was like, I gotta watch the. F- I turn it on. I, was yeah. like, I gotta watch the first two again in a row, and then fucking jump right into this thing. <laughs> it's been a while. Remember, for a long time, there was that stint where everybody was trying to one up each other on how gory they could make the movies. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they came out with the host- hostel, and then uh, oh, Rob Zombie oh, yeah. did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, that was. They just made movies, it ridiculously yeah. in the Saw mm-hmm. movies, and everybody just tried to one up each other on the gore level. I will never Hostel's forget. Hostel's kind of got like not as good. I don't know. Yeah. Man, that, I think it was the, the first, first one was fucked up. Yeah, though. yeah, it was good. It was like yeah. new. That scene the in the end, like good. towards the end, where where that dude's ankle just peels back because they cut his at- uh, oh, his Achilles yeah, yeah. forever stuck with me that just, <laughs> he's like yeah you can go go ahead stand up and you, it 
close up shot of his oh. ankle just separating. I remember it. Oh. Nar nar. Horrible. Terrible. Yeah, there's I'm several hungry. scenes in that where they're yeah. just fucking torturing people mm. and yeah. it was brutal. Uh, right. I don't like this movie, guys. Yeah, yeah. I made it to the end. I'm, we're not watching it again. <laughs> right. Murder porn. It's a little too fucked yeah. up. You're just like, oh my God, this could actually happen. Yeah, Eli Roth does some cool shit, man. Like, mm. uh, I, I'm always down. If Eli Roth has had a part of a movie, man, you know mm. it's going to be fucked up. So yeah. I'll watch anything he's I know his of. name for sure. Sure. Yeah, I definitely know that name. Yeah, Rob Zombie though, he's he does some cool shit. Uh, what was it that he that got canceled? He was doing a hockey movie. Hockey movie. Yeah, and they, the NHL was like, you can't fucking do this because <laughs> <laughs> hockey is like one of the more yeah. brutal sports. Dude. Yeah, everyone kicks the shit out of each other. He had some crazy hockey movie he really wanted to put together, It'd and be funny instead we he... got thirty one. Yeah, is 31. that really what that was? Yeah, because oh. they were like, he was on it and he was making shit happen. And then uh, they were just like, the NHL was like, we're not going to be a part of this. And, we're, you know, we're really going to actually try to prevent Step this from going down yeah, because you're geez. like making hockey players look super violent. He goes, it's a horror movie. What the fuck? Would and it have been great God. if yeah. it was just. And then like... he goes, whatever, here's 31. And he just. Huh. On the phone while they were telling him he can't fucking do it or whatever. It was what? Yeah, he was just like, I got. What about this fucking dumbass movie? And they were like, Sure, we'll buy that instead. Huh. Would have been great wow. if he would have done a hockey movie, but it wouldn't have been a horror movie. It just would have been like the next, like a new school Mighty Ducks movie. I was gonna say Mighty Ducks. <laughs> oh my god. Emilio. <laughs> <laughs> Like a PC uh, version of hockey. Yeah, just like he like, comes out with a G me, movie, like Rob Zombie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Old man, old man, old man it. zombie Your living next to the skate park, yeah. telling those kids to shut up. Yeah, that was that was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was that wait. zombie? Yeah, yeah, he was compl. I guess like some yeah. kids, like there was a skate park or something built like yeah. near his house, and of course the you know lamb goat or somebody picks it up because he was like sending complaints into the city like yeah oh, I'm making too much noise. Supposedly like, he came out a couple times, told him to be quiet. Can you imagine? Really? Oh, Rob Zombie so telling you to be strange, quiet? dude. <laughs> I mean, that, that, party animal. as a kid, you got to figure that guy looks kind of scary, like, in person. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, some dude with dreads coming he's out? He's short like, as fuck, fuck, though, off. too, man. But yeah, he's only, like, five feet tall or yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's a tiny little bastard. He's right. always rocking denim everywhere now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet so Canadian bizarre. tuxedo. Right? Uh, he's, he's not the Rob Zombie of old. He's kind of a dirty old hippie now. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, they're all vegan. That whole tour crew is, like, extra vegan. Oh, really? Yeah. Probably just it's good for you, dude. They're like vampires. <laughs> <laughs> it was all cool. real the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the whole right? shit. <laughs> no special effects required. We really are demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, those movies fucked me up, man. Definitely. They were uh, definitely brutal. Mm -hmm. Hard to watch. I just watched. Somebody said something about. I forget where I just saw it. They were talking about Necrogoblicon, and he's like, what if it was real the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude really is a, dude really a, is a goblin. goblin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where did I see that? It was hilarious. I love his uh, little stories he tries to portray in his videos, like the uh, dressed as, uh, starts out dressed as goblins. Yeah. That one, just like the story behind the video of him being like, Maybe adopted or being the <laughs> the kid, right? I think and, I remember this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like the the brother and sister, they don't they don't like him because he's different, so they steal his lollipop. And, yeah. And break it, and and uh, he grows up to be this kind of you know loner guy, and comes mm -hmm. back to the funeral because the dad dies, and pretty much like the only guy that ever loved him, and then he like ends up murdering everybody, right? <laughs> well, talk about branding, to too. They have, like, Chili's on their side, too, because, like, that whole character is, like, obsessed with going to Chili's and stuff. So, like... What? Yeah, you gotta... Dude, their <sighs> Instagram up. is... They're that, getting a lot of smart. stuff going. Yeah. That guy's I Instagram is hilarious. They just put out a book, <laughs> right? like, How to Be a Goblin or some, like, weird self-help book as John <laughs> Goblicon, and it's, like, it's flying off the shelves. Why am I not paying attention to this shit? <laughs> this sounds ridiculous. It sounds out with some crazy awesome. stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to get that book and put it in my freaking bathroom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. It's good enough. Oh, uh, that's fantastic, man. So what you guys been doing with the uh, with all the extra time uh, during the COVID, man? You guys playing? You guys writing music? What's well, going on? We've been taking a break, kind of. Yeah? We haven't really been, really haven't been writing a lot. We did our first practice here last week. Uh, it was a little rough, but it's fun to get back at it and get going again. Uh we're looking at doing a couple singles here soon. Nice. Uh, we got some material. Dustin's always writing. 
He writes a million bajillion songs all yeah. the time. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, totally. I don't even <laughs> like our music by the time it's. it's He's like, oh, I'm gonna. Space. I'm not gonna write a song. That for means a you're while. working on it hard enough. Yeah. I'm He's like, like yeah. here's five more. Get it out. I mean, yeah, we. <laughs> it's got to be at least twenty gigs of like unused songs at least. Oh you know, God. I mean, from one album. We had thirty rough ideas on this last album and picked. What did we release? Thirteen. Thirteen. Twelve. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's the way to do it, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like I don't know. We. We don't. Because we have a home studio, me and Thomas, it's not like we're scheduling like a certain time to have to write music. It's kind of like whenever you feel inspired, you can just sit down, you know, go to a room in your house and like just start. And then, you know, you just share music back and forth, the ideas, and we just mold it. So it's kind of nice. It's like a blessing and a curse the way it is, I think. I mean, you don't really hear bands that sound like Zeppelin anymore where it's a bunch of dudes just on acid in a room like... (laughs) <laughs> Let's grab our instruments and try this, dude. You know? Just yeah, yeah. for 20 minutes. Record labels don't want to take a, a chance on anything, you know? They yeah. want to they want to manufacture a product. They used for to be sure. like, well, one out of every ten will get us some yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll just let these Change guys go out and scout industry. bands. Like, yeah. Shout well, out now to it's us. everybody wants a prepackaged deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Are you already popular? Are you already going? Do you mm-hmm. already have stuff happening? Well, that was the thing we'll I was dealing you. with with uh, my last band, Cracker Man. It was mm-hmm. like... Like, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. was like, well, how much, you know, how many followers do you have? That's what they're more concerned about. Yeah. They don't give a shit about your record at all, you know? Mm-hmm. They're just like, how many followers do you have? How many, you know, yeah. what's your regular you turnout for your shows? You guys were morning news, dude. I remember that. That shit was awesome. That was hilarious. <laughs> we you got like fucking thrashed to that place. I was like, is this happening? This oh, is fucking man. happening. Were the yeah. people in the newsroom a little, like, sketched <laughs> yeah, out? Yeah, I like, wanted hey, to know hey, what was whoa, going whoa, whoa. on on the other yeah, end of Yeah, because that came out of nowhere. Because we came, <laughs> we went there to fucking play, you know? Yeah. But then they're sitting there, and uh, we were like, we're going to play the song that we did the music video to. I think it was White Trash. And uh, and so we're going to do White Trash. It's three and a half minutes. We got it approved. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, we because they were like, what song are you going to play? We need to hear it. Right? Check it out. Yeah, yeah we need yeah, to check yeah. it out, right? And so yeah. we're like, this is a song. And then they're like, all right. You guys got two minutes now because they, you know, whatever, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a show. Yeah. And then they go, you got, uh, you know, you got, or like it started going down. They came to us like two or three times, right? Wow. And then by the end, they were like, you guys got 90 seconds. You know, we'll just have you end the set and we'll go roll the credits. And I look at Tyler in 90 seconds and he goes, fuck them. And. <laughs> Wow. And he goes, fucking, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the song, but it was our closer, you know, it was the Trash It. Yeah. And it's like, it's a fucking 45 second song, and then we smash everything, and we know what we're doing when that song starts <laughs> happening. And he turns to us and goes, fucking playing the closer. And uh, <laughs> and we all just go, fuck it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we started destroying shit. And That's so, yeah. awesome. Yeah, because they cut us off, and we were just like, fuck you then. Do you yeah. know who the fuck we are? We trash every venue we go to. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we got on the show. Hey, yeah, that's there. like Cowabunga Bay when they they scheduled oh, us at Cowabunga God. Bay. I don't, I'm not gonna name names. I'm not sure who all was involved on that, but like apparently the fucking company Cowabunga Bay, their management or something, didn't realize it was gonna be death metal, <laughs> and it wasn't just like, us. Like there was a yeah. quite yeah. a few other death metal bands there or metal at least. The manager kept coming singers. back around. You guys need to turn it down. Turn it down. Turn, turn it, it down. down. I'll cut them. They sound too violent. Dude, we Jeez. went out. We went out and probably dropped like two hundred dollars on fucking shade tents and chairs and like Hawaiian wear, and we were gonna do this whole thing, and it kind of like bummed us out. Actually, of like, course it we bummed were you fucking out. Fucking pissed, and so we didn't even really. We half-assed the whole Hawaiian thing, but then we did it at Vamped, and it fucking slayed. Oh, man. Oh, that yeah. Was great. yeah, that was fun. That was, that was one of those that times I wish you were there doing sound. Yeah, like, we that, fucking yeah. paid for that stuff, yeah. man. We're using it. Yeah. That's probably one of our best sets. I don't think any of us gave a shit about the music. We were just, like, having fun, and somehow it just clicked so oh, yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah sounded good. Sound check song was uh, Margaritaville. There you go. <laughs> I mean, With the Hawaiian shirts, so, that's I mean, very you, appropriate. I mean, yeah. Vamped is vamped, you know what I mean? Everybody's yeah. in black and leather. It's a rock club. So that starts playing. Everybody's kind of like, huh? Yeah. And they have the curtain pulled so nobody uh, sees what we're wearing. You know, I it actually all pulls have, back. I have photos you know, that I haven't even deleted from that night. All oh, of really? us in the yeah. Hawaiian wear and just blast beats, you know? Three, two, one. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So it was a weird Shit. mixture. It went over really well, though. Yeah, here you go. I see that. Scroll, I think, to the right. You won't see any dick pics. 
Oh man, so so can I scroll? So I scroll into the left then. Don't right? go left. Don't go left. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, look why, at you guys. Why is it that color? That's I oh my, look at my fucking hair. Yeah, that's before I cut it. We're gonna I have to send you those. That way you can put them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. I'll, maybe I'll use some as some promo stuff. Uh, Randy I stuffed Udell. my crotch that night too, like massively, because I had like super short shorts on, <laughs> and like was balancing my guitar basically like on my stuffing at one point. Doing a solo, <laughs> it was kind of the highlight of my night. What's that? Uh, what's that guy's last hilarious. name? So I can get it right. It should be his watermark. Should be on those photos. It's Randy it's Erd. Is it Erdell? Oh, oh I'm gonna I don't, butcher it. I think somebody. St- I don't. These Randy, might be the if, if Randy ones. sees it, he knows. That's a that's a good shout out to him. He's taking pictures of us a couple times. And yeah. His, his photography is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I don't think these. I don't think. Oh wait, wait. These ones are yes, Randy. Oh. The Randy R. Yeah. R, and it looks like a V. Yeah, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll shout that out correctly here. We can. <laughs> Photographers are super important, though, man, especially yeah. the oh, music yeah. scene. You know, yes. it's like they just supply you with so much media, and mm-hmm. you definitely want to give shout outs and credit totally, to those people. Dude. I love anybody who takes pictures. Because yeah, it's not right. like we really can. You know, we're up there performing. <laughs> exactly, what, you, right? Like, yeah. set like a camera in a corner and like put it on a timer and hope that you get something. Yeah, you're yeah. going to pay someone to come down and yeah. shoot your show. You know, yeah. it's like, ah, oh, fuck, man. Now this is getting exciting. It How much are you? Because I'm only making, you know, 50 bucks in drink tickets. Yep. <laughs> if, if sometimes, that. yeah, if that, right? <laughs> 50, yeah, yeah. 50's a bit steep. Yeah. Uh, It'd be nice to make 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. But, yeah. I mean, I love all, yeah, like you said, any kind of photos are nice, but yeah. like, when you get somebody like like that, or just mm-hmm. any kind of pro photo, you're like, ooh, like, somebody that knows what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, like I'll, I'll hold on to that to photo tell. and post it like you know, mm-hmm. every couple of months, like throwback, you know. <laughs> yeah, like that hot uh, fire. Yep. Trish Kerr, she used to always be at the at Vamp shooting everybody. Yeah. She'd yes. be all over town shooting everybody. Yeah. We love you, Trish. Totally. Yeah, she always awesome. come up with killer footage too. Mm-hmm. Post it like the same day. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking awesome, man. Hell Wick. yes. Yeah, that shit's amazing. Mm-hmm. So you guys doing any? Uh, you guys planning on doing any of the uh, streaming that everybody's up to? Set up a webcam. There was and, something well, and a Patreon. That, yeah, Dan- I don't know. Danielle shared us something. I think it was like we would go to a venue. I'm pretty sure. Wasn't it? It wasn't Triple B's. Was I think it, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think Triple you like B's go and or... set up at Triple B's and like play your set, and I think you can do up to like 45 minutes. Nice. We could. We we haven't played as a band. Jesus, just the other weekend was the first time in what four or five months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. before that we just finished. We finished yeah, writing the album, put out the album. Yeah, took a couple months off. And then mm-hmm. COVID. Yeah. And then yeah. COVID. Like, all right, let's book some shows. Yeah. yeah. Wrong. We got nope. all hot and heavy. We're practicing a whole bunch. We had the Black Dahlia Murder show. That was fucking killer. And then it was kind of like, yeah, let's take a break. Get the album done. Got it done. I think we're all like, all right, I'll see you fuckers next year. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yeah. That's smart, Have man. Have a good Christmas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to be around each other that much, man. You start getting sick of each other in a totally. band after a while. And it's so good to, to like, separate. And then you come back and you're like, hey, as yep. opposed to this fucking guy I've been around for three years solid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it felt, I mean, we, so we, we got into the practice studio and we, you yeah. know, had a little issue with the the rack that we use, oh, yeah. which I found out was just dumb because we were setting it up the old way. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'm sitting there dicking with this thing and like, God, we used to have so much trouble with this. And I looked around and I'm like, God, this feels like home right now. <laughs> we're in the practice studio. It's hot as balls, and we're having trouble with the rack unit. Like, yep. fuck, this feels like home. Yep. <laughs> yep. We are back. That was the most normal I felt in months. Then we try to play songs for about an hour, 15 minutes, and then we just start jamming, yeah, yep. random things. Mm. Oh, Start nice. playing a little bit. Some of our jams, I swear, are better <laughs> than some of the content we release. Did did he just jams did he bed. just scream over the break? <laughs> <laughs> did did he just scream over the break? He screamed over the pauses. The pauses. Yeah, that's it. what it is. Yeah. I don't know why we got on that, but we did. Yeah. We were doing like stupid slow breakdown things, just epically long pauses, and we're just seeing how long he could basically scream <laughs> until he passes out, and then we'd be like. <laughs> He's trying to get that seven. What is it? Sixteen. Try to do second. the uh, the Chester challenge. The seventeen <laughs> second scream. Yeah. Oh jeez. I can only hit 16, 15 seconds. Fourteen and a half, fifteen. Yeah, I think it was yeah. right in there. But yeah. there's a there's a there's a venue next door to the practice studio, and they're having a live event. And they've got 
<laughs> some poor lady, you know, in there doing a whole set, and we're literally right next door, and they have their door <laughs> open, and it's a concrete building with a roller door, so you know they're hearing this. Oh, yeah. It's just, da, 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 and then, like, every break, you hear this poor lady, like, come on, da, 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 like, just like a, It's like a light like, jazz club, oh, dude. It uh, looks really cool, actually. Yeah. I definitely want to go there. I just felt horrible, because you know they're hearing it, like, yeah. every now and then, like, Fuckers next door. Yeah, we're like playing extreme heavy metal, and they're trying to do like a nice jazz. Sure, event. there's like a wine tasting going on. It's real <laughs> yeah. mellow, you know. Yep, yep. It looks cool. We got to be the Very dickheads cool. that show up. <laughs> and all they hear is screaming and blasting, and yeah. and it's been so long, so we're not super tight, so it just sounds bad. <laughs> they're just like, oh my gosh, these guys get suck these, out, get these are, guys out of here. Loud. <laughs> we shouldn't open this venue here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that happened to us at Beauty Bar, man. Mm -hmm. We were there for fucking ever. And uh, and then what was it? Don't tell mamas. I think the piano mm -hmm. bar set up next yeah. door, and they're like. Well, we can hear you doing raves and shit. No fucking really? You can hear us? Why did you why did you set up shop next to us? Yeah. You know what we fucking do. Yeah. And they're like, you need to pay for soundproofing. No, we fuck. No what? way. You Not going to happen. Yeah, and they, that was what ended up happening. We're like, we ain't paying for shit. Yeah. It was just like, this was our response the whole time. You should have known better. Yeah. But they were pissed at us, man. They'd be coming over complaining and Jeez. like filing like, I yeah, do just trying noise any complaints. Yeah, noise complaints and shit. It's like we have the right to play yeah. music. This is a venue. What did you think you yeah. like moved next to like a coffee shop? Yeah. Read the sign. Freaking downtown Las <laughs> Vegas. Right? God. Guy next door is trying to play Elton John's greatest hits and he just hears next door. Like you're not stopping oh. those bass waves, I'm sure. No. The the We're fucking dude, you know that <laughs> when you got that club going, it's like you're checking to make sure they're not clipping basically the whole night. That's your job. Mm -hmm. It's like fuck. Are we clipping? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, barely. Oh, turn it down just that much. Okay, good. Yep. And it's like, fucking slam it. <laughs> who, uh, yeah. Who did, we, who did we play with at Beauty Bar? Because that was forever that was ago. Rough. So, forever we, ago. I feel like we played it was, there twice. Uh, the Jordan. 80s. No. Was uh, it Jordan from Utah booked it? We did that once. We did a Utah show. Mm, show no, it was, the, it was the uh, Beauty Bar. It was. Uh, Oh, oh, what's their name? Oh, Am I no. thinking of a different? I'm thinking of the dive bar. Maybe. Yeah. Beauty. Yeah, you're thinking dive bar. No, Beauty no. bar is the one on Fremont. Beauty bar yeah. is the one on Fremont. Yeah. Oh, shit. Remember when I we played and the the band? It was it's two words, two words. 80s hair metal band. I forget who that. Oh, that was which yeah. one you're talking. Anyways, about. you know they haven't been relevant for. 15 years, but they still go around and tour. Flotsam and Jetsam? Yeah, Flotsam bingo. And Jetsam. Ah, are they yeah. 80s or are they new? No, they were like, no, they were no. like 90s? Yeah, they were 90s. 90s. They, were like a, they were like a metal band. They like were Jason really Newstead big. from Metallica played with them. They were big for a while. And, and then, then my, they... actually my buddy Craig Nielsen. You know Craig Nielsen in town? Uh -uh. He plays, I kind of do, yeah. yeah he plays drum drums. Dude. He played yeah. for Flotsam and Jetsam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to try to get, I got to get him on the show actually. Now that I bring him up, I'm going to hit up Craig. Well, they set up, right? They set up a beauty bar. And then they go, all right, it's all backline. Go ahead and set up your stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this on that was bullshit, man. On beauty bars, outdoor on that tight, stage. Yeah, we had to do that a bunch. Like, we, had honestly, a, we had about a space about the size of this coffee table to play. Yep. <laughs> like, I don't know how this is going to fly, but after being, like, 32 now, I'm about ready to start handing out, like, band agreements to promoters and be like, if you plan on backlining us, there is a surcharge of $200 <laughs> for the lack of movement that you need me to have. No, closed uh, mouths don't get fed. You know, it might happen. You know what I mean? Like, it, and it's not their fault. I get it. It's all a time thing. I yeah, totally it's a get time it. constraint. And, well, it also depends totally on who it, it is. Sucks, we play with man. we play with Black so Dahlia again. But when you backline, that was like a double backline. Yeah, but I mean, it's them. I'm not backlining yeah. for the '90s throwback group anymore. But they tried to <laughs> and they tried like, backline <laughs> like that was, seven that was, bands. That was too deep. Yeah, that was too deep. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. That was a great show. Love everybody that was involved. But yeah, that was not the coolest moment ever. Yeah. Well, they had to they had to expand, and then they they had yeah. a curfew because it was an all ages show. Yeah. It was supposed to be at one venue. They over they, it sold out, and then they moved it next door to to get more tickets. Mm -hmm. So semi understandable, but at the same time, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. glad it got moved. Could you imagine if we had a backline on oh that my God. triple B stage? Yeah. Oof, would have been rough. Mm. I don't even think you can. Right. I honestly, I don't. Think I'm sure they've done a it. Drum riser, like where they, do you they, even they, put they've the drums? done it. They, they do it right in front of the drum riser. Oh, 
then or to the, the left of the stage. stage. Or to the left, yeah. I, I like backlines are a bad subject for me. I get super shitty. I fucking hate them with a passion. It's a it's a necessary evil for the the touring next though. Mm -hmm. the, I guess you know, they they are at a you know they're they're fucking living on the road and they're just like I mm -hmm. expect these things and they they do what you're talking about yeah, where yeah. they send in a contract and they go this is how it's gonna be. Yep. If it's not gonna be like this, let us know. We'll go to a different venue. Yep. Go somewhere else. And then they're like sure, and we'll throw our our buddies Vatican on there. Yeah, and perfect. Not we'll, tell them any of this. We'll put them in the bathroom. Yeah. And then you guys can have the fucking suite upstairs. You guys uh, can just stand out front out front of the stage. Yeah. You don't even you don't even need to stand. <laughs> I've on done stage. that one before. Actually yeah. go collect yeah. your tickets while you're playing. Because the back line was uh it was the it was like triple backlined or whatever we were yeah. doing it. we were we were playing with a, a, a bigger band that sh i think it was at die bar we had to do this mm -hmm. and it, we should though they, they should I, who was it i forget but fucking die bar we're like how is this band playing there anyways we're on the floor you yeah. know like we're in front of the yes. stage on the floor in the pit yeah. drums and everything I think. Yeah. Right, we might we might have been able to fit the drums on the riser i don't know I don't know. I smoked too much weed back then. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a blur. Right. Gotta love those back lines. They're yeah. always fun. I do not. <laughs> I do not. Uh, One day I want to like be famous necks. enough that like yeah. we like make every band not get backlined, or like everyone gets the drum riser. Yeah, I tried Period. to do that at Vamped as much as I could. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't see them backline very often, honestly. No, because we have we have uh, the house kit mm -hmm. and uh, everything's there. It's just like, man, yeah, just yeah. go and play. You know, you got mm -hmm. two marshals, two amps, and and a drum kit. You know, yeah, what the yeah. fuck more do you need? I don't think I've ever seen it backlined. Actually, yeah. we have. have uh, you? Well, I mean, I don't work there anymore, but they, yeah, we did, uh, and and it was. Uh, I mean, it worked. The stage is big right. enough, right? But then they're like. They're like tucked up against the wedges, and yeah. the wedges throw like they're like thrown to their waist, so they can't hear shit. The yeah, opener is that fucking not that sucked. Cool. Isn't yeah. Danny? He's yeah, in a yeah. band. Count, count, count seventy seven. Count seventy seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen them yet, but like, I bet you he's probably like fuck the backline stuff. People are gonna come yeah. to my club. They're gonna play like fucking musicians right here. <laughs> I could just bet. It's been really well run since yeah. I. Yeah, yeah. Every time I've played there, it's been always great. I was mm -hmm. bummed when you left because I was still playing in there pretty regularly. Yeah, a lot of people were, man. Yeah, I mi yeah. yeah I miss seeing you. That's when you had long hair too. I did. I had my hair down to my ass, yeah. my beard past my fucking titties. <laughs> yeah. You guaranteed, you know, your, your set would get done, sick. the curtain get pulled, and you'd hear him like, Get off my stage! <laughs> get the fuck off my stage! I will send <laughs> feedback! Get off! <laughs> what the fuck are you still doing up here? That yeah. was always good, man. Even at it, was, like, it was just out of love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Touchy subject. I'll move on. <laughs> no, I was always joking whenever I was up there doing that. Is you know, that was just what to expect, yeah. right? Everyone's yeah. laughing about it when no, we're doing I was, it. Yeah. It's a great memory. I mean, you know, yeah. It was a great like for I. I didn't you know, I like where I'm at now musically, but you know because. But mm. fuck, we played it at, with the other band. We played there like once a month. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it definitely like the mm. sound there. Now I feel like it's even better. I don't know if they've Good. dialed it in more, mm -hmm. but it, man, that was the best we've ever sounded. Mm -hmm. And to have death metal there, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. Because they don't do that often. Yeah. yeah. So yep. I think we kind of cool. showed them with a couple bands that we pulled in there that like, hey, this is viable. Right. You know, doesn't have to be. <laughs> Classic rock and cover groups, you know what I mean? I was trying sense. to get them to do some cool shit when I was there too, and they were really against it, you know. Like, but I mean, your stuff pretty much. I, no, I wanted, I wanted to bring in like I, they had all those subs. I was like, let me do a dubstep party here. <laughs> I'll fucking, I'll make your nut in a fucking night, you yeah. know. And then you can do whatever shows you want after that. They're like, we ain't doing dubstep. This is an '80s rock bar, bitch. <laughs> get that shit out of here. Ain't That's happening. Funny. Yeah, I was like, oh man, look at all those subs though. Let me just shake everything out of the ceiling. Yeah, they are stacked across the stage. You got to use them once or twice. Yeah. Oh, shit. oh, I would be using them, but. God, our 808 sounded great, man. Those oh, yeah. drops that we've never heard, you know. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, I mean, we, we put them in there, and some of the places we play, they'll have a decent system, so you'll hear them. But yeah. I think it all, the first one in the set that we heard that was, you know, triggered on the track, I think we all were like, oh, we all meerkatted. <laughs> fuck, is that what that's supposed to sound like? Did we just blow one of their speakers? Yeah. Uh, we're not going to get paid <laughs> there goes that 10 bucks <laughs> <laughs> actually Vance really good man yeah Vance usually takes care of bands really really good yeah they have, they're I one of the better paying venues. better paying ones that we ever played at mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah. Yep. yeah they were always good about taking care of people yeah they were very nice everybody was great there mm -hmm. totally. I loved playing there shout out to Vance 
Yeah, shout have, out to Vamped. Because we haven't said their name like 300 times no in shit, the last right? two Good seconds. Vamped. <laughs> <laughs> Book us back when you open up, would you? Uh, we'll bring volleyballs days. again, or, or blow up volleyballs, whatever the fuck we had. Beach balls. <laughs> we did a show there where we did the uh, Christmas party, mm-hmm. and we brought fake trees in and like a bunch nice. of cheap ass uh, ornaments that were just like plastic. They yeah, weren't like yeah. the glassy kind, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we just started fucking <laughs> throwing them at everybody and Hell throwing yes. them back at us while we were playing. And it was fun. Hell nice. yeah. Yeah. It's fun, man. Like doing shit like that. I've never really done it when we were playing like throwing stuff out in the crowd or whatever. Yeah. It's like a different interaction for sure. Yeah. You want to get the crowd involved. Yeah. And when they start throwing it back at you, you're like, yes. yeah, everyone's having a good time. Cause that's the worst probably is when you're like, just up there playing and you can't tell what the fuck the crowd is feeling. Like, if they're not yeah. moshing for us, we're not really sure what the fuck to expect out yeah. of them. Like, usually there's a clap or, you know, whatever, but if they're not expecting, like, death metal, yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> yeah, you gotta put those shows together, right, yeah. man? Like, yeah. it's gotta be a metal show and, like, people are showing up to see fucking metal. Yeah, and we've had a couple where there was a lot of standing and, like, just applauding at the end, and we're like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but then I feel, I feel like that's almost part of the genre, because then you it get is. people in the parking lot like, man, your set was awesome, you guys were great. Like, really? So true. The whole yeah. time you were like this. It has changed over the years. <laughs> I think it's gotten more tame. Well, a lot Actually, of the metal guys, I mean, uh, I don't know. Do do kids nowadays, like in like a 16-year-old kid mm-hmm. in high school, is he listening to metal now? Or I don't think so, It's man. all just cats our age, right? Yeah. They just used Dude, to listen to metal, and we still do. So dead, bro. Yeah. Super dead. It's Everyone's all, like, over 30. Suicide boys and like shit like that now, like the fucking horror core rapper dudes and shit. Mm. Is that what it is? I think so, man. I stopped listening to metal a while ago. Yeah. If it's if I'm gonna put metal on, it's gonna be like fucking Pantera <laughs> Slayer, Cannibal Corpse, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? Like yeah. the shit I was listening to in high school. Exactly. That's what I'm going for. If right. I want metal. For sure. The newest stuff I listen to is probably like Lamb of God and they're not new at all anymore. Right. There's no. some new guys coming out that are pretty dang mm-hmm. pretty dang good. There's a ton of fucking sick bands. Yeah. Uh, a ton yeah. of them, dude. Like well Alter Beast isn't anymore, but they are fucking super good. No. Yeah. I haven't Arch heard of them. Oh, he's got an Alter Beast shirt yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. shirt on. Fucking yeah. A. Uh, Arch Spire. Arch Spire is fucking God. nuts. Is Brand, it? Brand like, of Sacrifice has been killing it lately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you gotta you gotta look up. Shadow of Intent. Yeah. Shadow of Intent. They've been killing right. it. Yeah, tech wise, you want to see some people I mean, go ape shit. Oh like yeah. Arch Spire. Arch Spire is just stupid. God. Yeah. They're from Canada, and like their drummer is just the fastest fucking drummer ever. <laughs> it just sounds like a fucking. Like a machine gun. That's awesome. It's gnar. I love tech mm-hmm. metal. What's a uh, necrophagist? Yeah, necrophagist. I think those guys. Yeah. Those guys are fucking awesome. Dude, they're nuts. We had a band Super called tech. Fetal Injury growing up, and that was what. Like when I heard necrophagist, I was like, "This is what we were trying to do." <laughs> you know, we were we were still teenagers, but we were like, "Let's play as hard as we fucking can." Right. And I was like, "Make sure, you, like, I'll show you these riffs. Yeah. You still can't play them. <laughs> I guarantee it." You know, like that was we were we were just, just trying to make it as impossible to play. Right. Right. More symbol grabs. More. No, on this <laughs> note, just this note though. Yeah. <laughs> you got to just fucking hardcore memorize every beat of the song because yeah. we're throwing little pauses in there for yeah. no reason at all but to make it harder to play <laughs> bop, 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 faster. yeah <laughs> totally shit's fun though man super fun gives you a challenge right makes you grow mm-hmm. i remember those days those are yeah. fun days that's definitely what i'm thankful for yeah. being in, with these guys that's mm-hmm. made me i mean i'm not a, i'm still not that good but i'm 100 percent better than i was you know what i mean mm-hmm. keeping up with some of the shit that dustin puts together talking you know. about harder and faster though you know you when you list, like, I remember, like, when I was in middle school, like, listening to, you know, Linkin Park came out. Yeah. Listening to Limp Biscuit. It was like, Dude, oh, yeah. Limp pa- Biscuit. Pa- Papa Roach, you know, Last Resort. I was, like, 12 or 11. Just, like, just <laughs> like, yeah, this is, like, good. And then then I heard As They Lay Dying. And As They Die, I was like, oh, yeah, this is heavier. And, like, mm-hmm. you're always looking for something heavier and heavier. And then Job for a Cowboy came out. Then I started listening to Job for oh, a those Cowboy. Those guys are good. I worked with them at the House of Blues. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. shit. Job for a Cowboy. And then, like, you start getting, well, I want, I need something heavier. Oh. And then you go to you need more, more. <laughs> you know, you start listening yeah. to, you, uh, you get into, I mean, 
just like Cannibal Corpse, and you get into the heavy stuff, and you're just like, yeah, like needs to be heavier and heavier. Just then start listening to Despised Icon, and just Mm -hmm. this breakdown's not seems like you're seems like you're always on a quest (laughs) to find a heavier band, just Mm -hmm. like make it more brutal. And the groups nowadays are just, I mean, the vocalists you hear out there, they just insane. They sound like straight up demons. Like, yeah, I I don't understand how some of them get do some of the things they do. Yeah. I don't know if it's production or what they do, but there's some trippy stuff out there. I think there's definitely a production on a lot of them. I would say oh, yeah. I would say more than probably 75% of them got that shit on. Cuz I mean, yeah. listening to Brand of Sacrifice, like that dude's vocals are just they're Insane. ungodly. They're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, just a lot of those guys will show up noises. and go, Here's my processor or they're running it through a pedal, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're like that's my sound. I got to have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But. Not our boy over here. Ah. No. Just a little reverb. That's all I use. We reverb. don't even put compression and shit on your vocals live? No. No, just yeah. reverb. We should. The engineer does, I'm sure. Yeah, right? Sound guy. Yeah. No, I don't know what you're talking about. That's all natural. <laughs> <laughs> Always compress the lead vocal. You need yeah. that thing squashed and, like, up here. Totally. Go smash it. Yep. it yeah. Right on top of everything. It's funny. My buddy and I, like, we have this conversation about compressors all the damn time. And, like... He went to school for audio engineering a little bit. I don't yeah. think he, like, graduated, but he was in there. Shout out to Chris Story, even though I'm about to kind of give you a little jab. Uh, fucking talk about compressors, and I like, couldn't get that, like, you can make it boost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's a volume control, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, no, it just it just makes it quieter and compresses it. I'm yeah, like, no. he definitely didn't finish his yeah. school. I'm like, nah, <laughs> dude. It does. It evens things out, yeah. but you can also boost it and yeah. turn the shit up. That's kind of the point. Called makeup gain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you... Uh, it's funny. You, that's what you want to so do. It's, it's You remove the dynamic of the, of the vocal so that you can put it where you want it in the mix and then when he's mm-hmm. singing quiet, when he's singing really loud, uh, the fucking compressor takes care of it all right you right know, they probably won't even notice my difference on there because i got a fat compressor going on all of us all at of once it. right now nice. you know so whenever it hits the system mm-hmm. it all gets smashed together and then it sounds like everybody's talking at the same level exactly. that's what they're for <laughs> yeah and then you just bring it back up this guy i have a nice tube compressor little preamp and everything yeah and this guy still when he goes to highs i'm like get the fuck out of the room like what <laughs> i gotta the stand fuck, back here dude Oh, yeah. It's like ungodly loud projection. I'm like, can you scream quieter for fuck's sake, man? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, uh, that's, not, that's an odd request, but it's real. I was uh, I was recording a track for uh, my buddy Joe Kilmeister. He's, uh, he's a fucking sideshow clown and an amateur wrestler, so we've been working on some huh. intro tracks for him, right? That's one hell of a yeah. resume. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and he's a tattoo artist. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> he'll stand the out. trifecta. Yeah, he's lives in L.A., right? So he'll be out on Long Beach, like, uh, like tattooing people. And when yeah. you think anybody tattooing, he'll be, like, breathing fire and shit and wearing clown makeup. And they're like, fucking A, man. He's like, yeah, I'm just hanging out tattooing people. You want fucking tattoo? Uh, and he'll fuck, he makes a killing out there. He'll get tips and he'll get tattoos. Totally, then, man. He's hustling it. Yeah. But so uh, he was in the studio, <laughs> and I went through all my mics all the way down to an SM57, and I'm putting pads on the XLR before it gets to the preamplifiers and shit. Fuck, put pads on the preamplifier, yeah. and he's doing this clown laugh that he's gotten really good at. But he's so it's so loud that um, like he's walking on stage. He does freak show wrestling. Um, dude, you guys gotta go to freak show wrestling. We went to some. We were like, yeah, my boy's there. Fucking, I don't care what it costs. I'll support my homie yeah. and I'll go pay so he gets some money. And uh, you know, because uh, nobody buys tickets, nobody's getting paid, right? Yeah, yeah. So you go support your fucking friends, yeah. and we go there in support and love, and we had the best fucking time in the world. <laughs> We were just like, holy shit, this is fun. Like, it's <laughs> it's absolutely absurd. X-rated, R-rated adult humor, you know. And nice. he walks out on stage, the crowd cheering, hits this laugh. You can hear him with no microphone on, no nothing. Jesus He's Christ. louder than the freaking announcer. So he blowing, he's blowing everything up in my studio. <laughs> we couldn't get, I was like, you need to back the fuck up, <laughs> yep. man. Go yeah. stand in the corner. Stand like five totally. feet away from that yeah. microphone. It's terrible sometimes. You're just like, I don't know what to do. I'm about to put you straight through. Like cut a wire or something. Yeah. <laughs> like it's always a fuck. it's always a ten, fifteen minute process when we first start doing vocals. Yeah. Like, no, nope, too loud. Uh, Just to gain a little bit. Okay, now back up a little bit. No, right? no, come a little more I know. closer. I hate it. I need to like buy another uh, one that I don't run anything but vocals through. You just do a yep. just vocals. Do the old garage trick with a tennis ball. Like put your nose on the <laughs> tennis ball. <laughs> 
that's where you stay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard that's when perfect. you're getting into it. You start you start screaming and stuff. And right? You yeah. just want to get closer. Yeah, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's mic control, man. That's yeah. uh, sometimes you just want to dive in and hear yourself screaming, and then uh, mm-hmm. you got to get a fucking loud ass monitor. That's the thing, man. Mm-hmm. Like so that way, when you're way back here, it's yep. like you can hear it crystal this clear over the drums. When I got good monitors, still. it's yeah. great. Yeah, when I have good monitors. Psh, we had a we oh, had a whole beautiful. conversation last. I, I think it was like the last session we were doing. And you know, he's, it's just him on the headphones. We don't have anything pumping into the studio because it's all one room. And he's, you know, he takes his headphones off. He's like, can we hear that back? And me and Dustin are like, yeah, it sounds good. He's like, no, but play it through the speakers. Like, no, we can hear it. He's in the corner, but we can hear everything that's going on. At coming, his, his ears should be gone by now. Dude, so Because he loud. likes it so loud. So loud. And we're like, no, we're good. We can hear it. We're <laughs> Great take. Yeah. We heard it all through your headphones. Dude. Uh, Ten feet that way. It's like a funny. <laughs> so loud. Oh, it does how loud. you don't have, like, permanent hearing loss. Huh? Yeah, what? exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, then he's got it all cranked, and then when he screams, he presses him on his head as hard as he can. I don't know why I do that. And I yeah. put he my hands up like this when I scream. It's, it's, your, uh, it's your voice, right? So, like, do it. Um, Maybe you inside your own skull, your you resonate. It, you know, and you, uh-huh. you can hear yourself over everything, even with like in ears in and everything. And so you got to like yeah. get those things push and sound into your head, uh, and like seal off as much as you can because you're mm-hmm. still you're always going to hear your own voice rattling around in your own skull over the music yeah. and so yeah I uh, I learned that the hard way in the early days of audio engineering and fucking recording bands and shit it's like man I need I need the loudest goddamn headphone amplifiers and headphones that can handle serious voltage man mm-hmm. because like you think it's bad for singing yeah. drummers are even worse oh, yeah. I can't even yeah. and uh, it's they're just fucking deaf people because they've been <laughs> playing drums forever right and they just <laughs> yeah. it's like man you, you just hang out at home and practice drums two hours a day without earplugs in every day and get really good at drums now yep. you're fucking deaf <laughs> uh, and so they just you can't turn it up loud enough it's just like super high end headphone amplifier just fucking gain and it's like clipping and he's like you got any more man i can barely hear that Boost it. <laughs> it's like you walk into the thing and you can the second you open the door it's like he's got the fucking things on blocking the sound coming off it's like reflecting through the jesus bro you know work at all hear the music coming out of his mouth like a fucking speaker yeah. <laughs> just fucking exactly yeah out. that does that sounds like nick man his his in his in ears when we play live oh, yeah. they're cranking louder yeah. yeah louder i mean and there was a, there was a while where we had it all panned to one side and he's got that blaring he's got clicks and tracks and everything blaring in one ear yeah. like jammed in his ear and then he, every time he goes to blast or like he needs to hear something <laughs> he's putting this ear so you know one ear is just shot from just getting everything <laughs> blaring <blamed. sighs> Dude, it, like, have you ever turned your head a certain way, like, after, like, a night of drinking or being a little dehydrated, and you get that, like, strokey feel, mm-hmm. and, like, your neck tightens up, and you're just kind of like, oh, fuck, here it comes, I'm gonna die. <laughs> it slowly creeps yeah, up your neck yeah. for, like, 35 seconds, you're just yeah. like, no, no, it's gonna get worse. It's gonna happen. That's how I see Nick, like, every time oh, when he starts man. to blast, I'm like, this is the part where his neck kills him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's fucking killing, man. He uh, he gets through it, and he doesn't die. <laughs> yeah, that's why I always get um, those fucking uh, Texas headphones is what they're called mm. for the drum riser. We did it at Vamped, and, like, anytime okay. someone hires me to, like, hey, I need you to run, uh, like, monitors at a festival or whatever, you know, yeah. they know I want Texas headphones for my drums okay. because I'm not trying to play with these motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, I, wanna, I want them to go turn that shit down. Yeah. Turn it down now. And that's where I start, too. The kick is just <laughs> fucking up. And they hit it, and they go, whoa! <laughs> and there's like that's where we get the rapport, right? Okay, okay. You just you figured out the recipe. Yeah. All the years of frustration, you're just like, uh huh, uh huh. Just right. fuck them up, you know. <laughs> just hit, just hit them right in the brain with their own kick drum, and they, <laughs> if they're telling you to turn shit down, you're at a good spot, man. Right. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the most of the time, they just go like, is this monitor even working? You yeah. Know? Like that's really their response, and it's because they can't fucking hear. They need it louder. You yeah. got to give it to them. Yeah. Yep. You can't just True. sit there and go, you can't fucking hear anything. He goes, I know. I know I can't hear anything. Help me. And you want me to play? <laughs> Turn it up you want me to play music? Yeah. 
You want me to play drums to a song I can't hear? Yeah. What the fuck, man? Yeah. I'm deaf. Just looking fuck around the up. stage trying to pick something up. <laughs> yeah. The panic look. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> That's it, man. You know, you got to give them what they need. And you can't you just sit there like, and go, you need to hear better. Yeah. That's not an option. Turn up your ears. Yeah. You get people like Thomas that give you the the frightened panic look on stage when everything's going fine. He'll give you one of these. <laughs> like, like what? What? Uh, like, I did something wrong. He's just, like, just my face, man. It's it's really face. Everything's fine. When he's on stage, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> him and Nick have said, oh, you fucking gave me the look of death. What's you wrong? Give me the panic eyes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. Nothing. What happened? Uh, I don't even man. do it on purpose, but now I'm going to start. Because I do notice your face. Like, oh, there was terrifying. There was at least like one song that was getting hot. We were always like having like a problem, and you would always like get the the panic look at all of us. We'd start. Yeah. It just gets like more intense on all of us. We're like, oh fuck, oh fuck. Here comes the spot we fuck up, and Thomas is watching. <laughs> uh, There's always that spot in every song yeah. that you're like, we don't got this, but the show's tonight anyways. We're, well, there's we're going. there's that, and then there's Smee, where that that little weird breakdown where everybody plays the same thing. Where yeah. Every time we play it, as long as it goes through right, you will see at least me, him, and maybe even Nick, like, woo <laughs> Like, it looks like it's all part of it, but it's really like, fuck, we made it through that. They give we, the visual high it. five. Yeah. Uh, nice job, dude. <laughs> it's either that or the sour face when it goes wrong. You get that one wrong note, just <laughs> Fuck. Oh, dude, sour notes <sighs> all day. Yeah. Oof. All day. Never made it through a set with that one. Oh, my God. I don't think so. No. Not even once. Maybe, don't maybe even expect a song. That ever. Maybe a song. Yeah, like one song. Like, You're like, do we not make any mistakes on that? Not one mistake on no. maybe like one song, but a whole fucking possible. set? Mm. Mm. No. Good luck. Nope. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, uh, that was what? Was that the practice before that Black Dahlia show? Mm -hmm. We all just walked out of there like, wow. We just fucked up. Oh yeah, everything sounded so good. We like, fucking murdered. We that wasted practice. the good one. <laughs> yeah, dude, totally right? Totally did. Every the time. superstition Every comes in, you're like, we'll never play yeah. that good when no. we get to the fucking show. It's not gonna happen. No. <laughs> yeah, it Pretty never does either. You only no. like the third song in, you're like. Okay, I'm feeling this. So I'm like, okay, we're getting our groove, and then it's yeah. over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every totally. time. Oh, uh, yeah. And then right. I had fucking in-ear problems when we started that, too. Duh. All the Black Dolly murder. I was so pissed. I'm like, uh -huh. are you fucking kidding me? Not this show. Not this one. For fuck's sake, man. Those are the ones that go the worst, man. Yeah. Every time, it's like you've been dialing it in a certain way. You got it going, then you get to, like, a big arena or some band you're ready to play with and then it's like okay yep strings will break batteries all need to be changed now what my else? guitar get, get a spontaneously combusts <laughs> yep. i put it away with all the strings and it's only got four <laughs> now like one of our band members is missing nobody can find Dude, him that fucking happened in revolve yeah that fucking happened and we had to play the set without him you got like arrested the night before oh a what yeah yeah. Tell that. What, what was he up to that got him arrested? Can you uh, tell the story? I think he was drinking and driving, possibly, and yeah. just got popped. Ah, oh, fuck. But, like, I, I'm sure he didn't use his one phone call to call one of us. <laughs> hey, I, I won't be able to make our set tomorrow. <laughs> Nobody can find him. Yeah. Thousands of missed calls. Yeah, none. None. That sucks. Yeah, it was brutal. That he sucks. had a couple of spots, too, that we just had, like, solos and stuff, and I didn't even improv. I just was like, all right, guys, I'm just going to play my parts. Just use it as a fucking vocal break because, like, I don't know the fucking key right now. All I know is these chords that I play. I'm not going to noodle around and look like an idiot. Right. It's going to make <laughs> it sound worse, I promise. A little uh, jazz improv in the middle of the set. Yeah, I mean, now I would probably do that, but then that was like 10 years ago. Yeah. Was a long time. You got to know where it's at, too, man. If you know you can't fucking make that happen, you're going to look like a fool. Don't fuck around with that. Just no. play the chords and get through the song. Exactly. Yeah, so nobody like nobody knows the difference. 10, 15 seconds of your life that yeah. you're like, well, this is a little boring in this well, part. I, yeah. I, had to, I played a, a left-handed bass upside down. Like, I, I, I worked it so that I could play it, you know, yeah. right side because I broke a... Like a tuning peg or something. Like, oh, like, fuck. like there was like three songs left or something. It was that vamped. Yeah. And and I was like, Kid, did anybody have a bass we can borrow? And the band before us was like, yeah, I've got one. 
went to the backstage area and I pulled it out of the case. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. Uh, you realize yeah. this is left handed, right? I was like, fuck it, we're gonna make we're gonna make this work. You can borrow it though. Yeah. Strapped it up and played it upside down. It was great. Fuck yeah, bro. You didn't restring it just upside down. I should have. I thought you were right. saying like you restrung it and everything. Oh, like, no. oh my god. No, no. I, I would have been like, fuck you, you're no. not restringing my guitar. <laughs> you Mind if I borrow this and change right? the tuning and yeah. restring it and set it up to my liking? Yeah. Yeah. Mail it back to myself when I'm done. <laughs> That's just my base now. This is mine. Yeah, yeah. Totally For mine. Sure. Yeah. No, this it. one? No, I didn't borrow this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my buddy uh, my buddy Anthony did that with uh, with his band. He, uh, what's it called? The drummer quit or they fired him or something. Like They didn't have a drummer, but there was a what? show that weekend. <laughs> and uh, and Never he, fire your drummer before yeah, the show. Dude. <laughs> he programmed the whole fucking set on... Um, like just a, a simple drum machine program with his laptop and yeah. and fucking went and they played the whole set with his laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. people cool. fucking loved it. No He was shit. like, I only was able to program, you know, I had like, two days. I was able to get like these six songs programmed <laughs> and everyone's like screaming like, keep going. This is awesome. You're doing this. And he's like, we could, we could keep, we could play the songs we just played. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> well, what was Encore for your whole set again. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> my uh, my children, That's my awesome. bride. Yeah, they, my children, my bride. That whole it. tour didn't have a bass. Yeah. Like every uh, band yeah. didn't have a bass player. What? But yeah. Yeah. it was weird. It was just like that one tour, no bass. They ran it no. through a rack. Just yeah, they ran, ran their mm-hmm. bass tracks through a rack. And yeah, programmed no it player. all, and then they had it going out of a mm-hmm. out of an uh, an eight ten. Yeah. So you know it was tuned extra low. Like all the all the notes were probably way lower than they should have yeah. been. Yeah. Fucking hell! Sounded great the, though. Oh my god! Beautiful. Yeah. As a bass player, Best I'm cutting this part out of the podcast. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I am a bass player. No one player, needs to know that this is a possibility. And it sounded so good. Uh, I was like, hey, can I get that tone? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Right, dude, sure. I know. They do that with, uh, certain bands do that with their whole fucking band, too, man. Mm-hmm. They go out on tour, and they just have everything Pro Tools, mm-hmm. and they, they plug it into the fucking console, individual checks off a Pro Tools session, they go up there and pretend to fucking play. Yeah. And it's like, man, that sounds incredible. You know, sure why didn't the band before them sound <laughs> that good? And it's right? like, because they actually play instruments, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We actually had to do a show live for you, the one before, with mistakes and everything. Yeah. It's like when this is a CD. When all you got to do is stand up there and look pretty, it makes it way easier. Oh, God. <laughs> God, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But it shits all over everyone else's game. It makes, you know, it's just like nobody in the audience understands that. Yeah. What's happening. It's like it they're basically like Millie Vanilli. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Ridiculous, man. <laughs> Ruining shit for people who actually can go up there and play their fucking instruments, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to stream a video possibly? Yeah. What do you guys got? What do you want me to stream? Um, that last music video? Yeah, yeah. Probably we'll do a one. King of Vermin. It, where's, where, where am I going to find this at? YouTube, mm-hmm. for sure. YouTube? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to YouTube. Normally, I have all this up beforehand. I'm off, I'm off my game. All self-shot. All yeah. self-edited. <laughs> Homemade. Yeah. Homemade. DIY, bro. That's the way to do it, right? Oh, yeah. So, uh, what did you so say? King of Vermin? For. King of Vermin. Was King of Vermin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Featuring Matt, maybe, and Chris Story. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. damn, 3.1 thousand views already, guys. It's cruising. That's not bad. Not bad for some dads. That's not bad. Ooh, full screen. So I actually got
story. Yeah. That's slick. Is that a... That's an ethereal. It's an ethereal. Yeah, Anthony's getting into the A-string stuff. Yeah. Hard to make them sound really good. Oh yeah, you gotta have uh, like a simulator, like a fractal, yeah. and really like dive, dive into that kind of shit. Yep. Yeah, we just dressed up in tracksuits and drove around Vegas all day. <laughs> in an old Cadillac. That's how you do it, man, you know? As long as you got video content, you're get it up on you know? You know, you get a people idea of who you are. We like to have fun as a band. We're not too serious, you know? You shouldn't be. Recording all this in your home studios as well? Yep, we did those all in Dustin's house. Oh, nice. It took us about seven, eight months to get everything dialed in and done. But we like the way this album came out a lot. It sounds good. Uh, featuring it was our awesome. good friend Matt Maybe, Deathcore Dad memes. Go, nice. give him a, go give him a follow. He does a lot of stuff for us, and we really appreciate him for that. Uh, he was the uh, he was the guy in the passenger seat singing, right? Yeah, he was the other guy that did vocals in the video. Okay, and uh, really really good dude. Love him a lot. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's a big help. Yeah, he's definitely a big help. Just you know, he's got he's got his pages. You know, just solid memes for you know the more heavier side of music you know he's got he's got his finger in all of that so like it's easy to uh it's a different it's a different way to advertise basically you know you come up with a funny post or whatever something relatable and then you know tack a little link yeah. in there you know oh hey check this out like on, on top and you get some click through oh, so nice. it's you know well that's the, i mean one of our big boosts was when uh when we actually met matt he he told us uh you know I want somebody to do, uh, what is it called? Seventh Element by Vetus. It's a song. It's a song. Uh, it's a Russian singer. Okay. And it's you'd like know this, it if you saw it. I if guarantee. You, yeah. yeah, you saw it. You'd be like, oh yeah, that video. And uh, oh, it's that it, weird YouTube it, video. It's where the, it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one. That's exactly what. I, that's exactly what I thought you were doing. Yeah, yeah. So he wanted somebody to do a metal cover of that, or a, at least a metal vocal cover. So I was like. You know, whatever, I'll go over. I went over to Thomas's house. Thomas has a little bit of a studio set up at his house. So I go over there. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll toss some vocals and see how it comes out. And about two hours into trying to make it happen, I just was like, it, it's, it sounds funky. It's goofy. Yeah. I, I just don't even want to send it. I'm not going to send it. And we sent it anyways. We're like, whatever, you know. If it gets a little traffic, it gets a little traffic. And it ended up doing uh, 2.5 million plays. Ooh, and yeah. and uh, got picked up by Chive and, and a couple other places. And it just, like, spiraled into this big thing. And it was just, it was kind of funny that this just 
these crappy, there's terrible vocals. Is it on and your Facebook or something like that? It's on YouTube. If you look, if you look up Vetus Metal or Vatican Falling Vetus, yeah, or Vatican Falling Vetus, it should come up. Um, it had like thirty six thousand on YouTube. It got nice. two point five million on Facebook, and yeah, about halfway through, number. you know, he had, you know, he was drinking while he was putting these out. Trying, trying to get the, the right noise down, and I was pushing him like, no, 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 we're gonna finish, we're we're gonna do this, we got it. Just kept pushing him and pushing him, and putting my my head hurts <laughs> trying to make this sound. <laughs> it was uh, so hard to do. That was difficult. I mean, it's just and it's goofy. Oh, it's so goofy. But yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's a is, scream cover of Vetus by Vatican Falling. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and it's got his video on it though. Yeah, I'm gonna just play the. I'm just gonna play the audio. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so that'll be enough. Trust me. Yeah, so I can get permission from you guys for the audio. The the big the yeah. big draw is the the actual chorus. <laughs> so ridiculous. We actually had a couple people email us like, "Hey, can I get that for a, for a full ringtone?" Song. Oh yeah. Do you have the full song? Like, it's like no, no, <laughs> don't have the full song. That's it awesome. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But just a stupid little video and. <laughs> it's fucking perfect. I mean, yeah. it translated into, you know, traffic, and you just hope that people like your, you know, actual material rather than the jokey stuff you do, yeah. you know. I'll, I'll put the link to that in my in the description as well. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah, you got to, I mean, it's content's content, you know what I mean? You, I, and we, like, any kind of, like, interaction with people, like, I you know, we love it because we're all, you know, we're all logged into the, to our Instagram, we all have, you know, we're all logged into our Facebook, so it's like, you know, sometimes we'll get something cool, you know, somebody will respond to us like, man, I love you guys, blah, 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 and it'll end up being a double respond, because somebody's typing out a thank you, and this, that, and the other, and then somebody else on the other side of town is doing the same thing. Oh, nice. So, you know what I mean? You get, like, two thank yous and two different responses, you know what I mean? It's um, it's cool when people like your shit, man. It's Yeah, yeah, that's the game we're playing now, right? It's like you got to... Uh, Commoditize? Is that the fucking right word? I don't know. It sounds wrong to me. Uh, I like it. Yeah, right. You got to, you got to make money off this shit, right? You got to yeah. monetize the uh, the uh, YouTube channel and, oh, yeah. and the fucking Facebook page and everything, and try yeah. to get something going for you because it's like, yeah, that's the world now. Everything's online. Mm -hmm. No yeah. person to person yeah. contact. Well, shit, especially now. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's just the little things, man. Like we had. Um, the, the little things are the best things. Yeah, the last album that we did, not this most recent one. Mm -hmm. Somebody it was like, hey, man, you know, I want an album, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you'd ship to me. I'm like, well, where are you at? He's like, Germany. I'm like, that's going to be expensive, but I'll figure something out. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I, I probably still have the picture of the, of the, you know, receipt from the post office because I'm like, holy shit, dude. I looked up the town. It's like a tiny little town, like 5,000 people in Germany. I'm like, some dude, like, fucking far away is like, yeah. I love those guys and I must have a CD. Like, that's just so bitching. It was like that other guy that wrote us on Instagram not too long ago. He he's in the military and oh, he yeah, was, was in he was uh, stationed in Africa, and he sent a little message to the page saying that he wanted the lyrics to a song. So I sent him the lyrics, and uh, talking about how he liked us and and how he, we were probably the he was the first one to play us in South Africa because he'd play us on nice. missions when he would go when they'd go out on missions with his squadron. And I was just like, really cool. Like, that's so cool to hear stuff like that. Is just it's mm. like really like that's what I like doing the music for. Like, just like those little things. Like, that's the coolest part about it. Like, yeah. and I, I'm like notorious for doing that. It shows. Like, if anybody comes up and's like, oh, you know, like talks about it or like, like I'll see a couple times I've had people like singing the lyrics while I'm screaming the lyrics. Like. They're, I, they know what the words are, oh, that's, and it's like that's, that's a really good feeling. That's what gets really crazy, and like I'll just like give them merchandise. I'll be like, here, take this and this. Here's a CD. Here's a T-shirt, and I'm just I do that all the time. Like I'll just like give stuff out. Yeah, and it's just like, oh. but it's just like so much fun. Like that's like the the best part about it. Those people will wear that shirt too. You know, yeah, they're yeah. gonna support you and they're gonna like promote your band. You yeah, know? that's the important thing. Yeah. Man, you get your name out there. People yeah. start recognizing. And yeah. more t-shirts they see and shit. Exactly. But it's been a lot of fun. I mean, just in terms of, this is probably the 
furthest into a project that I've gone, like in terms of longevity and releases, material content, and actual, like trying to be a band that people might recognize one day. Well, yeah, get into your second album. That's a big deal, man. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of, I've been in tons of projects where we get the one album. And that's the project, you know. We played that one album for a while. It was fun, you know. Maybe we were banned for a year and a half, two years. Yep. And that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you, everybody kind of it moves on. But, yep. like, you get that second album, you get a third album in. It's like, oh, man. I've yeah. never done a third album with a band. Yeah. I've a, gotten two couple, you know, once, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I did two with Cracker Man. I think every other band I've ever been in has been a one-album project. Yeah, the last project I was in was Where the Fallen Lie and... I was one one CD and we were done and it was only nine songs. Yeah. And and this band three albums and all of them are eleven tracks at least. It's just it's like a lot. A lot oh, more. you guys have three three full length albums. Yeah. Three full lengths. That's yeah. <laughs> dude, that's so hard to accomplish in the yeah. state. Of, how long have you guys been a band for? 2016? 2016. Yeah. Nice. So, so four years and three albums. Yeah. And now you guys are pumping them out efficiently, right? Yeah, yeah we're like, trying. trying. Holy shit. Yeah, that's, and, that's not slacking. And we're working on more singles, right? Because we want to release a couple singles yeah. for like right now. Singles uh, is the way to do it, too, if you're trying to sell your songs. And that's, yeah, for sure. That is definitely, it keeps people interested. So if you're releasing singles every couple months, People are going to stay in tuned, yeah, and they're going to yeah. keep coming back and seeing what's new, what's new, what's new, because you have that constant release of songs. When you release an album, it may get a lot of play for a month, two months, but after that, it's yeah, kind of falls by the wayside. Yeah, you know, you still get plays, but not like you had them, and you can really see that, like uh, when you look at your streaming across platforms, and you can see the the big uptick. And when you do single releases, you get the uptick, 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 and it, it stays going up. Yeah, you see, yeah, like this last one did was doing, you know, for us, record numbers, you know what I mean? Nothing like crazy, you know, but we, you know, kept seeing every week it would go up and up and up, and I was trying to, you know, make sure I would just like, okay, I'm going to check it every week. Checking, checking the, yeah. the right. Spotify every yeah, morning. Yeah, Spotify oh. updates every morning. Oof. So you're like, ooh, 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 That'll 20 more nuts. listeners. Yeah, yeah. So 100 more listeners. So I'll go up and up and up. And like he was saying, man, it just, it's not that, you know, people don't like it. It's just, it's not new anymore. And somebody else just released something. And, you know, yeah. especially if, you know, on our level, somebody, if somebody, I think, was it? Uh, well, I jump around all the time. I forget like, who it was that dropped one ro- the week that we dropped ours. You know what I mean? It's like, Fuck. Yeah, Black Dolly released something like a week that. later. Yeah, but I mean, it stayed strong, and then all of a sudden, you'll see when you do albums, you'll hit a fucking brick wall, and your your numbers plummet, and yep. it you know it's just the way it is. Which I like doing albums because it's you can release everything how it's supposed to you know how it's supposed to be played. You know, we sit there and choose an order for a reason. You know what I mean? But I guess you know you can do single, 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 and then tease the whole album out and then be like okay here's the whole album if you want to buy it you know yeah this totally what a lot of the mainstream guys are doing yeah is they'll do four or five singles now mm-hmm. and you know it's been up from being one maybe two songs to you got bands now that release five six singles before they actually drop the whole album yeah. they'll like tease half the album and then drop the whole thing i've even talked to some of the bands that uh they're not even interested in doing an album anymore because yeah. they're just like, it, we make more money off the singles. Mm. Yep. And when we drop an album, it's like, man, we just like wholesaled our music and we and we don't make shit. Yeah. And it's Chir- like, yeah. Chirko, Chirko said the same thing. Yeah. Said, why even record an album? What's yeah. the point? Unless you you're some major, it, you unless know? you're some major artist, why? Yeah. When you're, I mean, producing, a, uh, you know, 10 to 13 song disc of music it's it's a lot it takes yeah. a long time it takes a lot of money and mm-hmm. then if you're gonna print it as well and it's like fuck that's a lot more money yeah. as opposed to just like uploading a song every month or so and it's like that that seems to be where the music industry is kind of going it's just the for the sake format. of the artist yeah yeah the yeah. dj format exactly yeah. i mean right. one thing one thing I, I think we can be thankful for in you know the metal the more heavier metal tech death and all that is physicals i feel like are still somewhat viable like yeah. uh, i think it was the last album we didn't print any and we still got people knocking on our door like hey come on can we you know are you going to print those physicals for that album blah, blah 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 so you know and even um like vinyl there's 
thousands of people that kill for for a lot of metal bands that are putting out these you know limited vinyls and stuff like that and they're selling like hotcakes man vinyls are up as vinyls yeah. if i if if i go to your merch booth and i see a fucking vinyl i'll buy it yeah you know what i mean cuz that's something else that's yeah. that's not just a CD that I'm going to put in my truck, which let's be real, that's all I'm going to do with the mm, CD. Right, yeah. It's going to go on my truck. Yeah. I, I'm, I, if I want the songs, I'll, I want them downloaded to my phone where mm-hmm. it'll go to everything else. Yep. But like with the vinyl, I got a, we got a listening station. Yep. And it's like, now I'm going to enjoy this fucking record. Now you got a yeah. fat thing, or, you know, yeah. a thing of art to look at. Yeah, you know, the maybe art. some inserts here and there, depending on what they do. I would, I would kill to do it. I would love to put out a whole thing, you know, of each album. But fuck, you know, you got to remaster the whole thing for vinyl. Yeah. You know, if you want it to sound halfway decent. And then, you know, the, the printing cost of that, you know, you got pretty high minimums. Oh, you yes. got to make them the pretty vinyl too. Yeah, that's what sells too, you know what I mean? If you're doing cool variants or if you're doing limited, like we're only doing 10 of this color. Oh, There's yeah. a whole section of guys that just... I mean, they're in it for the music, but man, are they collectors for for, for you know for for short term variants and stuff like that. They go ape shit. Oh yeah, we just had my buddy uh, Jerry Pesh on the show. He's an artist, and he does um, uh, metallic uh, photo prints or like not photo prints, but he art painting. Right, it's yeah. fucking awesome. And uh, so before he does the main release, he'll do like a limited printing. Just a, it's a test print, right? Just a. Yeah. yeah, proof. It's proof. That's what it is. So he gets a couple proofs in, and he goes, cool, that looks good, or no, that looks like shit, and we need to change it. And then he has auctions for those proofs, and people go fucking nuts because Test they're... Prints, yeah. Yeah, they want those proofs. It's not even a, It's not even like a numbered, right? Like 1 yeah. through 50, like he does for the print. It's just like, no, oh, this is a limited proof. So they, he doesn't even sell any auctions them. And he, you have to go on and like, yeah. just, you know, you like the post, and then he'll... But, yeah, people love that collector shit, man. They fucking mm-hmm. love it. Yeah, who was it? Knocked Loose did Gangbusters with their, their hardcore band. They fucking murdered their last, like, uh, you know, uh, album release or whatever when they put out vinyls because they did, I think it was, you know, a block of 10 or 20 or whatever this color, 10 or 20 that color. And they sold out, and, you know, people, like, three days after they're sold, people already turn around and flipping them for two or 300%, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And well, the people are buying them. It's, yeah. It's wild that it made a comeback for one, and it's wild that people are that excited about it, you know. And it's funny that it's the metal, the metal scene, real big on vinyl. Yeah, I've noticed all, that it's like of all genres, the death like, core, the yeah. metal core, like vinyls are really big in the genre. Yeah, well, it's because it's their hobby, right? I mean, it, yeah. metal's not just metal's a way of life, yeah. right? Yeah. Like uh, when I was a really big metal guy, right? Like that was fucking everything. It's all I listened to, right? Like you don't listen to shit else but metal. You're always wearing a metal shirt. You go to fucking metal shows every weekend, uh, and like you're just involved in it, right? Yeah. It's like this thing that you just love. Yeah. Uh, it's beyond music, you know. It's definitely a lifestyle kind of thing, and uh, so yeah, I can definitely see people really get into that collector vibe and i mean i was that way i had i still have the biggest fucking t-shirt collection yeah it's huge man i was regularly uh when i was working uh you know in the music industry instead of corporate i was regularly having to rotate my t-shirts in my closet and they were all fucking black too which is hilarious right like now that i'm doing now that i'm not in the in the music industry right it's like the last thing i want the black shirt anything but black man i've been wearing it my whole life polos more polos (laughs) just a color fuck um i really like my anyways i'm gonna you keep talking about the metal thing, right? So, uh, <laughs> no, I got a, a huge box of them. I won't get rid of them. It's like yeah. a collection oh, yeah. thing for me, right? And yeah. like, and and every time I think I'm gonna get rid of them, I'm like, let me just look real quick, and I go, oh, I remember that concert. It was bam. <laughs> I fucking remember the whole show almost just from looking at the back yeah. of the shirt. Oh yeah, that band was there. That band. Oh, I remember that show. I haven't thought about it forever. Yeah, big old box of nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's, it's hard great. To get rid of that. Yeah. And you start just organizing it in like level of fade. Like right. that's the least faded shirt over there. This one's pretty much gray. I need a giant like closet. Like uh, you know, the chicks get their giant shoe closet. I just need a giant band shirt closet. There I'm not go. gonna wear any of these old pieces of shit. They're falling apart. <laughs> I wore them till the fucking holes coming out of everywhere. You know, and it's you like you gotta you gotta cut them out, cut out the art and frame them. Oh, yeah. that's a good idea. Just do a big actually, patchwork quilt yeah. of just. Terrible, oh. like, terrorizing metal art. You guys are blowing my mind. That's a really good idea. Oh. I actually turned, I had an old job for a cowboy shirt. Yeah. They used to get their shirts printed from uh, my one of my best friends in town. His cousin did printing in California. 
and a lot of people used to come to him back in the day. He all shall perish, and uh, I think he did prints for uh, Winds of Plague before they were Winds of Plague, and a bunch of the old school metal bands. He did a bunch of prints for him, and uh, he uh, did like little endorsements because he had his little clothing company called Nefarious Clothing, and uh, he did. Uh, some stuff for job for a cowboy and he gave me one of the prints he did for him it was like one of their first or second shirts that they printed out and it was a super cool shirt and uh i had it forever and it got to the point where there's just holes you know holes and it just was falling apart so i took it i cut it and i put it on a jacket and i put the 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 artwork on the back of a jacket and it actually came out pretty cool oh that's a good idea too yeah, yeah yeah just repurpose it but i mean that's something that you could never find again and yeah. you know that that artwork is you know somebody spent time on that and yeah. did that and made that and and it's just crazy that it's just i mean it was so well done and so pretty that i was just like oh it's yeah it's cute. memories too though yeah and it's yeah. memories and it's yeah. like i remember going to the show at the fort cheyenne event center back when that existed and like just watching kids almost kill each other when yeah. I was 18, 17 years old and just, you know, the security guards tasing people. And, oh, really? Oh, That's it was great. great. Who who was it? It was uh, uh, Elijah. There's a band called Elijah back in the day. And they were super young. I mean, the guys in the band were probably 16, 17, but they were ridiculously heavy. And everybody loved them. And when they played there was just a pile of people in front of the stage and you just see people crawl out from underneath the pile, run all the way back to the back of the Fort Cheyenne and run and jump on top of everybody else. And it just, it was insane. Like I, that's so great. I haven't been to a show like that in forever. Like seeing that kind of stuff was just insane. And just like everybody was moving and everybody was going nuts. I think the only one that would compare to that, like for me, just like, trying to think of like the wildest crowd would be Andrew WK. Yeah. Oh, I bet that's a fun show. He throws, uh, he's throws a fun show every time. Talk about commanding a crowd like that. You want to see somebody control the entire room? Yeah. That man. He counted down from a hundred and everybody was into it the whole time. Yeah. Not, not like a 10, nine, eight type deal. Like a hundred. 99, and everybody just screaming. He didn't lose a single person. Was there music playing behind while he was doing it? It was like a synth, like, That's it? Yep. And he just stood in the center. It was like right before his last song. It was right right before Party Hard. Yeah. Oh, of course. And And no one's going until they hear Party Hard. Counted down from 100, and he not, I swear to you, not a single person in that venue was lost. screaming. Everybody was facing him. Everybody counted down from 100. It was mind-blowing. That's I've never amazing. seen somebody command an entire place like that. And then you had people on people's shoulders running around. It was his his shows are just giant parties, and it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. That's what it's supposed the to be. The best man. the best concerts uh, have always been Andrew WK. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's just a blast to go yeah. see. Like everybody's just there to have a good time. Everybody's happy. Nobody's like you know doing the angry. Oh, I'm super metal super tough guy metal. thing. Yeah, everybody there is just being a goober, running around, being goofy, and you know. I don't think I've seen a fight at an Andrew WK show. I'm no. sure there has been, but right. like awesome. everybody's just stoked and happy to be there. <laughs> like, yeah, and I've done. so positive. I mean, we touched on it earlier. I feel like that's kind of lost somewhat in the. I mean, we're we're yeah. smaller, so you know what I mean. There's not there's not going to be a ton of people, you know, at the moment that are showing up for us. You know what I mean? Because the crowds get bigger for the for the bigger acts, but there's not. You know, there's we have a few here and there where people get rowdy, but it's like. You know, you can come a little bit closer. You know, you don't have oh, yeah. to be way in the back of the venue in a big half circle. Like, there's all this space. It's hard. As an opener, it's really hard to get the crowd to come to the front row for you or even pay attention to you mm. at all. You know, it's like, it's such a well, rough Well, they're there spot. for one thing, right? They're, yeah, they're, they're there to see a specific person. Yeah. Yeah. They paid to go see the band they like. They don't yeah. give a fuck about anything else there. Yeah. And uh, it's really hard to get their attention, you know, and, like, actually fucking get any response from those people at all. All. Hurry up and play your 15 minutes and yeah. get the fuck off the stage. That's why we started smashing <laughs> shit. We're like, fuck it, man. You know, pe- we start smashing shit, and like, if you <gasps> smash it like second song in, or yeah. I, I remember the Halloween show, like first song in, I, we played like 30 seconds, I started smashing my bass, and I didn't plan on it, it was just play, playing like shit. And, uh, and then everyone's just like, front row. And they did not Something's move after going that. Yeah, here. they're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and yeah, it just got it. It's so hard to get there. But you know, besides destroying your instruments, what are you doing to you know? What, it's hard to get the yeah. the attention as the opener. I think the core community, though, in general, has kind of lost their 
happiness it shows. Yeah. So you, I mean, you get the, the, the core community anymore when they come to these shows. They just look angry and very standoffish, and nobody's having a good time anymore, it feels like. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, I remember going to metal shows and just, like, you know, getting in the pit, and everybody is happy, and yeah. nobody was, like, mad at each other, and you fall down, and everybody helps you back up. Those were the days, and you right? And still, you still have a little bit of that, and you still see it, but even, I mean, more now you get what they call crowd killing now, people that intentionally swing and try to hit people that... Yeah, it's just more like the like hardcore stint. scene. Yeah, they're just karate like crowd killing. Karate like in the pit. You know what I mean? Thing. Oh, Where the shithead do, kids. That you can do the karate in the pit. Don't understand the fucking but, thing that we started. But the crowd killing portion is like, this person's standing behind me. I'm gonna try to kick him in the gut, like, or I'm gonna try to hit him in the face. That's like, ridiculous. You're gonna get the shit beat out of you for that. Yeah, and they and they do, and they get into little fights, and like you have yeah. that happening. But I think, uh, I think the you know the camaraderie and the unitedness of metal is kind of. Uh, that dissipated a little bit in the newer school stuff yeah. and the newer scene. Uh, outside of Las Vegas, I think it's a little bit better, but yeah, uh, everybody's got that community, and definitely out here, man. Like I noticed, there's a uh, there is that standoffishness. There is that I'm too fucking cool for school, yeah. wearing sunglasses in a club at midnight, fucking yeah. attitude, you know. And it's just like, man, are you gonna take that leather jacket off? It's fucking hot in here. Yeah. You know, but uh, no, this is my this is who I am. Yeah, I'm leather jacket guy with sunglasses and the cowboy hat, like, you know, and it's just like, fuck, is that what this is turning into? Who did we play with? Uh, we played with uh, Poolside at the Flamingo, yeah. and uh, oh, they're a band, band out of Colorado, and they're, they're grindcore, yeah. but those dudes were like up front for every, th- the whole show, from the very first band that played to when they, because they were the closer, yeah. they yeah, were up the front, tour package, but they're, they're going crazy, they were just partying having a great time that's how we would do it and it wasn't like there wasn't a huge turnout for the show because it was you know some kind of obscurish bands yeah but they had a blast and it was a like it was a lot of fun because of that and it's just uh i think a lot of that gets lost i don't know if it's just here Mm -hmm. or what is going on well it's funny too it's it almost seems like the bands are nicer to each other and happier to be there you know what i mean than than sometimes some of the people like in the audience are oh yeah you know because we'll be in the back we'll be talking to people like all kinds of bullshit, you know, laughing, having a good time or whatever, you know. And they, like I said, you, you get people that are standing there like like this the whole time. Yeah. And then once your set's done, they come up, man, that was so sick. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, maybe it's just a Hey, shyness. there you are, you know. They don't want to look like, like they're not cool, man. I guess. Everyone's, None of us everyone's, are cool. everyone's putting on a front for all these fucking people that don't mean shit. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's like so pointless. Metal is That's why I'm a total goober. Yeah. I, I just make a fool of myself all the time. <laughs> you're, listening the, the joke. you're listening to the wrong music if you want to be cool. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. None of us, none of us are cool. We're, we're, all, no. we're listening to metal. Yeah. We're all nerds. We're, yeah. we're all of us, dude. We love the stupidest shit. I mean, it's, it, I don't, I don't, there's no reason to try to look cool. No, yeah. there isn't. That's why I like going to like Primus and Zappa shows, man. I'm always bringing up Primus too much on here because people are like, "You love Primus, right?" But <laughs> that's your deal. But uh, yeah, that's what I know you for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but no, the when you go to those concerts, man, it's just like you know, friends I've made at Primus concerts. Everybody's just stoked to be there, standing in line, you know. And it's like the guy in front of me and the guy behind me, and we're all talking now because yeah. hey, you're a Primus fan. Fuck yeah, you must be a weirdo, right? And <laughs> so you like Zappa too, right? And we're like, of course I like Zappa. You like Beef Heart? And they're like, yeah. And then we're best fucking friends we're hanging out all fucking night i never met these people before yeah. and literally everybody in the place you know you go show up tripping balls right <laughs> you're just like fuck i can't f- you know I, i'm having a hard time functioning and people look at you and go oh, you need some water man and they, hang on a second. they just go <laughs> buy you water you know like they like just random people are just they just it's this yeah. It's yeah. that camaraderie it's that community. you were talking about. Because yeah. I remember in the metal scene, it would be the same way, yeah. right? And it was exactly there the was same way. big brotherhood and big camaraderie of everybody, and everyone was yeah. there to have fun and support each other. Yeah. And then it turned into, like, I'm fucking cooler than you. Yeah. Oh, you and listen to this guys. band? Oh, you're, you're yeah. like, that's yeah. not okay. metal. That's yeah. not metal enough. No. Yeah, it's, it's not metal enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's not hard enough, yeah. or that's not heavy enough. Why, or, core, that's why don't you have yeah. neck tattoos? Why aren't your ears gauged? What, what's wrong with you? Well, I mean, to the I mean, to their credit, though, I mean, the scene out here for for metal, like for our stuff, is pretty solid. Like they, yeah. you know, not to not to harp on them, but no, they, sh- yeah. you know, they show up. I mean, uh, Stephen uh, Goldberg puts on 
shit at the, the you know the the little veterans halls and stuff. Steve and Larry, yeah, he, I love Stephen's shows, dude. Yeah, those Stephen's a good dude. They're they're in the middle, you know, they're way deep Henderson. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, that feels far. And you know, any 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 time somebody starts naming those area codes, I'm like, or the you know the zip codes, I'm like, fuck, really? But yeah. you know, he he throws them and he does you know his damnedest to you know to to pay out his tours and you know take care of the local guys. Like he he puts on amazing shows, you know. And they might not always be the best, you know, time slot. You know, you're not going to get the best time slot. Sometimes it's going to be on a fucking Tuesday. Yeah. But it's a solid tour package coming through on a random date. You know what I mean? They, fuck it. Let's play it, you know? Oh, yeah. And He's people a solid show dude. up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's funny. That's where we used to play, too, when we were doing metal shows in Stockton, man, is uh, the American Legion Hall. That's exactly mm-hmm. where that is. Yeah. Then we grew up at the fucking <laughs> Legion Hall, man, just smashing each other, man. They just yeah. have a thing Kids. for booking metal bands? Is that just, like, their thing? Is that also I, in their charters? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There was, nowhere to f- there was nowhere to play in Stockton, and they even did a thing where they were, like, um, because the gang problem was so bad, they declared black a gang color because... Oh, God. You know, the metalheads are all in a circle, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're a gang now. And it's just like, Jesus, man. We're not yeah. the fucking pussiest ass gang you ever met. <laughs> right? But uh, no, you know, we, it was ridiculous. So they, and then they started shutting us down everywhere until they even were able, like, you can't even go to the Legion Hall. So we had to, we had to like play outside of our own city just to play oh, a, a show because they were like, you can't, yeah, there was no venues. You couldn't set up a venue. Yeah. Yeah. They just were against live entertainment, like the whole city. It's it's harder for, for locals in general. It's yeah. hard just being in this city, but it's harder, you know, you know, the, the more extreme your music gets, the less mainstream you're going, the harder it's going to be. And like guys like Steven, um, I'm going to forget other names, but they're, there's a solid group of promoters that kick fucking ass out here for locals, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, they keep the they keep the scene alive. For definitely. Yeah. I mean, because otherwise nobody would be booking him. I and mean, yeah, he's been doing it back since he. I mean, he was booking Imagine Dragons before they they oh, yeah. blew up. You know what I mean? So he's been doing it for a hot minute. I remember playing shows at uh, the Farm, the Box. Been doing it since at least box, 2007, 2008. Yeah, yeah I remember uh, going with the Dragons to a couple of those fucking smaller venues. And uh, and fucking around with his systems. <laughs> there was <laughs> there was one that I, I what was the one way on the east side was that the farm? Way on the mm-hmm. east side. Um, I don't remember. Was it like the box or something? The box or something. Box office was down office. in da- yeah. that was down in like the art district. Yeah, there was one. There was one like off like fucking in the middle of nowhere, uh, not anywhere near other music venues, but like, like Boulder like, Highway ish. No, no, no. Oh, sorry, no, the west side. West side. The west side. I think it was the farm. The farm yeah. on yeah. Russell yeah. and Rainbow. Rainbow. We went in there, man, and they like they were so limited on gear, and then like they had unqualified engineers that were like getting creative trying to like uh, I had to rewire their whole fucking system to make it work right man the, the fuck, dragon's gone on stage and we just started like opening channels up and checking out what we're dealing with and it, they were just like what's happening <laughs> save us Jay what the fuck is going on and they, <laughs> they had routed like everything through one compressor and so whatever you were doing you were like Burying into compression, and then they were like routing outputs into compressors too before they were hitting stage. Like shit, you don't do. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a mess. It's fun going around playing in these like random little venues, man, where they're paying some guy fifty bucks a night to yeah. to get these bands on and off the stage yeah. and maybe get a vocal up. They got the they uh, got the uh, pawn shop special sound system right, set up. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. yeah. And then you, know, you got to show up. You got to show up with your band and power amp and from the nineteen seventies. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank yeah. Thankfully, we've got guys like <coughs> Macario and. Um, oh yeah, he's great. Is it, uh, is it Wind? God, I'm gonna forget. I, forget. I always forget the other guy's name for that does sound with Steven, but they've got like solid tour guys that you know when oh, they're yeah. in town they're running sound. So it's Good. like okay, fuck, you know, this you know the sound system might not be gigantic. You know the room is not really treated for this, but you're gonna sound decent because these guys are running you know faders. So it's cool. Yeah. yeah, you never know what you're gonna run into out there, man. So many times I've shown up at venues. Um, you know, as a guest engineer with a band or whatever, uh, and it's just some dude who is not an engineer. Yeah. You know, he's not an audio guy. He just is like a tech. He's running the door. You know, I can fix TVs. Yeah. <laughs> I can do this and that. You know, it's got buttons huh. on it. I can make it work. And it's I'm like, Mike's oh, cousin who told fuck. me to come down and yeah. gave me 50 bucks. Yeah, I run the door yeah. and I'm also a bar back and a dishwasher. Yeah, he's like, can you explain gates to me? 
Let's see what this button does. Literally. <laughs> Not supposed to be clipping the whole time. I thought red was good. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh, man, fuck. How do you... <sighs> this guy wired the system, didn't he? We're in trouble right, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> We're in big trouble tonight. Yeah, you don't know what you're walking into when you're out on the road, man. I started bringing all my own shit, man. I bring a console and an engineer. It's just like, I ain't messing around, bro. I got my own monitor wedges. Yeah. I got my own snakes. Well, shit, now get, it's easy. Get the fuck out of my way, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, move this shit. I'm going to do a show. The best place I ever played was in Ridgecrest, California. Yeah. And it was a bar. I forget what the name of the bar was, but in Ridgecrest, California, it's not a very big city. And it's in the high desert of California. And it's a military town. And uh, this bar was probably, I don't know, 20 feet wide by like 60 feet long. So it's like a little box. Hallway. Yeah, it's a little hallway. They had like a pool table set up in there. And then like they go, here's the stage. And it's like a little riser that's like off the floor about yeah, that far. The drum riser. Yeah, the little drum riser about high off the ground. And uh, so we set up all our stuff. And we're like, well, we'll see how this goes, you know. If we play to an empty room, we play to an empty room. Uh, all done it. We went to the, we went over to where we were staying at, and then came back after we offloaded all our gear, and uh, the place was packed, sold out. There was they crammed like 150 people in this little tiny space. That's awesome. Those are the best. It was insane. So it was good energy, the, right? It was the funnest concert I ever played. And and a girl broke her nose. We had this light box that we had set up, <laughs> and I had like metal grating, and uh, she's in the pit like running around, and they're every, like it's just a jumble of people, and I just see her go face first into the the light box, and it has that metal, and it just straight into her face, oof. and she gets up, and she's bleeding, and she goes yeah. Of and course. runs away. I was like, that's awesome. That's amazing. Then later on, we're standing outside, and, like, it was just such this crazy high, like, doing a concert like that. And uh, standing outside later, and this dude's, like, holding his arm. And uh, he's like, I want to go home. And, like, his friend's like, no, you got to go to the hospital. He's like, no, I want to go home. And he's like, you can't go home. Your arm's broken. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was such a crazy, just wild yeah, concert yeah. and I mean, that's that's like the parkway drive route right they they don't play yeah. giant cities yeah you know they're a fairly big band but they'll go to the b and c cities where not a lot of bigger name acts will pop in and they'll fucking destroy the place because they it, oh shit there's something to do you yeah know what i mean that's you know kind of like that town there's yeah. really not much to do so you're getting everybody there that's why if i we if we ever book a, a like a, a longer tour i'd, I'd only want to play b cities i'd never want to do you know, L.A., Las Vegas, Phoenix, like you got to be on. You got to be on another tour. You know, you got to yeah. Buy you got to be with somebody to, to somebody play those bringing a crowd. Mm -hmm. But if you play those little towns, like that's just so much fun. That's because we everybody in town comes. Everybody yeah. in town shows up, and it's just like it's a trip. It's a lot of. It's a blast. Yeah, when we were touring with that metal band Fetal Injury and we had to get the fuck out and we were like, oh, let's just go up and down the West Coast and play random cities, you know, and it was like literally random fucking cities. And sometimes we'd be driving through a town and they're like, how far out are you guys? Because you know, you're not playing a show tonight, right? You're driving to the next city. And it's like, yeah, and they're like, you want to fill in for a van that dropped out tonight? And we're like, we don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, you, know? yeah. <laughs> you got a big bottle of whiskey waiting for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just our best up. shows. Yeah. Random yeah. little towns, and yep. fucking everybody would show up, right. and they'd everybody. be there partying. They don't know yeah. who we are. Yeah. We weren't even on and the they bill. They don't care. Yeah. Right. yeah. They don't care who you are. They just come to to show up yeah. because there's something to do. Yeah, there's nothing else yeah. going on, right? Yeah. And it's just like, fuck it, man. If there's a if there's a band at the bar, we're, we're going to yeah. the bar, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah those are the – that is a good um, – concept of yeah. like yeah if you're if you're starting out doing this tour on your own and then just go to the fucking b towns man the yeah. smaller ones i'd i'd love to do that i'd love to go out for a month or two and just do a nice play those little towns yeah. just no nowhere big because you play the big places and it's oversaturated with entertainment you yeah. know entertainment's stretched out throughout the city there's always something to do well that's the hardest part about playing anywhere in vegas man yeah, yeah. you know you're, you're competing with everything yeah. it's like uh cirque du soleil or the local metal band yeah. it's like fuck yeah <laughs> britney spears gwen stefani elton john yeah this band rod stewart <laughs> yeah <laughs> rod stewart some tonight, giant right? tour is coming through that that arena yeah. now that we got chicago's you know, playing yeah. um 
Def Leppard's playing over at the Hard Rock. Who are we going to go see tonight? <laughs> yeah. You get real unlucky and you get an actual, like, a band that's our genre that's like, oh, they're at the House of Blues tonight. Well, we're fucked. You yeah. Know, you know? The whole metal scene's gone now yeah. because they're going to see that for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Which, but you booked that show three months ago and they booked the House of Blues, you know, three weeks ago. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, this is like, drum. fuck it. Yeah. Or you don't think to Can't, look, you know, that yeah. far out and you're like, who's playing that night? You know, who are we going oh, up yeah. against? You know, but. It happens, you know. Now you just keep your head down and just and keep playing your shows, man. You know that's all you can do, right? You that's know? the that's the game. Consistency. I I'll, would do. I'll some... play to one person, and I'll play to I've done a thousand. Yeah, I've done thousand. It. I've done. Right. I've done. I've done one to ten. I think. I think. I think uh, yeah. Provo was one person. Yeah, that was. We that played was... in Provo, Utah. One person booked a show up there, and uh, one of the locals dropped. The other local brought maybe themselves and two other people right you know and then it was two, two two people from two bands from las vegas we went up there with minus and yeah there's i think one person and uh the bartender so it was pretty yeah. it was one person and the bartender and it was and it was like spring it was spring break or something like that because it's a college town yeah it was yeah. spring break so, so everybody's gone everybody's gone the, nobody's in town it's in provo and everybody goes back home to their families and, and so uh. spring break nobody parties in provo for spring break fuck <laughs> yeah so yeah, and man. it was a little dive bar too. Mm-hmm. So, but the best part fun. about that was the kolaches the next morning. I don't know if you oh. ever had something like that. No, Ruska's Ruska's kolaches. Oh What's my god, that made the whole trip. It's worth like it. a little puff pastry filled with like savory meats. Mm. They're like eggs and bake. Oh, that goodness. sounds good. Yeah, they 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 do all their stuff homemade every night. They're making dough, you know, oh. and then they get up in the morning and then they're packing those bad boys through and throwing them in the oven. It was Sunday at seven thirty in the morning. And there's a line of 40 people out the door. Oh, you know it's oh. that's the spot. Oh yeah. If you ever up that's in Provo, spot. Utah, Rus- Ruska's Ruska's Kalachis. Oh, we'll check it out. I'm in Utah a lot. We yeah. go camping up there all the time. That's go. worth a trip. That's They're, worth going just just for that. Yeah. 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 Very good. Well, I definitely have to check that shit out, man. I love I love like eclectic food like that or when we're traveling somewhere we're like oh look it's a fucking mom and pop diner yeah let's stop man let's go get something you know like, where, do you, where do you guys really go camping good. up in utah uh we like we like Kolob reservoir po stuff like that man we go to um the saint george area i have a buddy up there nice. and so we'll like usually cruise up meet up with him or we won't you know and we'll go on our own mm-hmm. and uh and we fucking yeah there's it's just so beautiful up there man you know like, and there's so many sp- campgrounds just oh, yeah. everywhere 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 the coal up spot's my favorite spot though i should probably stop saying that on the show because i don't want too many people going up there and stealing my <laughs> like, sweet spot we but, went and we went up there not too long we were up there what four or five weeks ago mm. we went up I, I have a little piece of property up on the the back side of cedar mountain oh nice so but it's yeah. it's great i've been there. over by cedar mountain yeah. you got to understand why somebody would give somebody some land oh really boy oh boy was that hard to get to yeah. Oh yeah, He's like, yeah, yeah. We're I just gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's not that bad. We're, you know, we're gonna keep going and in, into these mountains. I'm like, fuck, we've been on. <laughs> I'm like, I got five acres up there. He's like, oh, break me off an acre, you know. I'm like, okay, you want to go see first? <laughs> yeah. He gets up and he's like, I don't want the acre no, anymore. No, <laughs> keep, keep your land, bro. This ain't worth the trip. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous once you get up there. It's like it's one of those things where it's like, fuck, that was ridiculous, but it was worth, you know, yeah. the, the view he's got up there. It's crazy. Granted, I went up to Wyoming two weeks ago. That is flat. Wyoming, or northern Northern Wyoming. No, no, no. it is Montana. Gorgeous. Yeah, it, it, some of the prettiest forest I've ever seen. Yeah, it was on the, the Bighorn Mountain Range, and it was just there was deer and elk and and moose everywhere, just everywhere. Oh, and it was just the prettiest trees and there's grass everywhere. I've never seen forest like that thick. It was thick forest, oh, like that fairy tale style forest. Have you ever been up to uh, Oregon and yeah. checked out the forests up there, man? In, it's kind of, it reminded me yeah. a little bit of that, but it was like a kind of a mix between Utah and Washington. It was like a oh, cool. very evergreen, very, very pretty. They just have a different kind of rock structure up there. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, go up camp in Wyoming. It's I would love to. Ridiculous. Yeah. Sure, I think I have a buddy up in Wyoming that just moved there, and uh, he's been asking me to come up and hang out with him. He's got a little cabin up there. He's, yeah retired military you know oh. got injured so he's got money coming in he's just chilling at his cabin with his dog fucking living life that is the life he's like right come there. on up man yeah. you know and yeah. and i just you know i get so wrapped up in my shit <laughs> i really gotta see I that know. motherfucker yeah. uh, don't we all we all get wrapped up mm-hmm. doing stuff 
Oh yeah, that's that's that that type of area. That's Vermont for me. I got family back there, and God, is it ridiculous? Yeah, you know, it's just green, green, green as far as you can see. Like at night, you know, that's all you hear is like some bugs and just you know, just no noise. You know what I mean? I'm I'm getting. I've been here, born and raised, 27 years. I can't stand this place anymore. I can't do the heat. <laughs> Every time I, I leave town yeah, and I see some, your whole life, I've man. seen like, you know, every time I see other like places, you know, any, anything different, like, fuck, this is nice. Maybe I should move. Like I'm getting yeah. intolerant of this heat. I don't know what it is. The heat does you know? suck. I find when I go other places that it's like, um, I'm into it at first and then there's, there's not shit to do. Yeah. And I'm so spoiled with living in Vegas exactly. and shit's open all night, you know. It's 24-7. Like, yeah, 24-7. There's always something to do. Not that I go out and do, I mean, it's been COVID. I mean, we but used to go. the yeah. option. We used yeah. to go out all the time. We were very insistent on, like, you know, we'd go see a show at least once a month. And then if I had some time off, it's like, we'd go do stuff. You know, we'd go walk around and hang out and see some shit every once in a while. You want sushi at 3 a.m.? Yeah. Las Vegas. Yes, Las Vegas all, has killer sushi. We're all yeah. getting a taste of what the rest of the world lives like i guess like yeah. what do you mean you close at eight last call what yeah yeah everything's closing early Fuck. you yeah. want to go to dinner at four in the morning las vegas a good dinner too yeah. i need to go shopping at and it's 3 30 in the morning well, i can yeah. go shopping you can do whatever you want out <laughs> yeah. here it's amazing and, it, and it's the same thing i'll go other places it's good for two weeks mm -hmm. but then i'm ready to come back plus the laws right they're not as uh they're not as crazy out here man you know mm -hmm. you go to california you can't do anything mm -hmm. at all tax yeah. to hell yeah tax. all tax to hell that's why i like wyoming. we got no state tax you know the casinos pay for our state tax it's fucking yep. fantastic wyoming's the same way no state tax yeah that's yeah that's why the way like to do that. it why do they get away with it no state tax I don't know. I don't know. I know they, we got they the, have the They're the least populated. Because it's Wyoming. Because it's Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, right? It's just like encouragement to move up here. They're like, yeah, we don't need your tax money. The government's been... Hey, guys, we got plenty of room. I think <laughs> they're the least populated state. Is it? In the continental U.S. Alaska, I think, is the least populated. But I think Wyoming is, in the continental U.S., I think it's the least populated state. Uh. But it is. I would... If I were to move anywhere other than Las Vegas, it'd probably be Wyoming. Fucking okay. A. And I've only been there once. Especially if you got you know, friends and family up there. Yeah, so. yeah. So, but it, it's it's really, if I were to move somewhere, but I just like the convenience of Las Vegas. Yeah. It is super nice. Yeah, yeah. It'll always be home for sure. I mean, there yeah. was always like as a kid getting off the plane in the airport and hearing ding 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 ding. ding you know, oh yeah. There was something about that noise. They're like, ah, I'm home. Like that is the weirdest fucking thing. But that was, I swear, it was almost soothing. You know, no, I love it. Go, coming up the, the the airplane ramp and hearing that, it was like, okay, there's a familiar there's sound. Slot machines. Yeah. Even the attitude, like you're when you're away from the strip, right? Like the local shops, even they get down Vegas style. It's like there's fucking neon lights around all the windows yeah. and flashy shit, and like they're like, man, they're 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 taking it the extra step. You go out other places, they might have like a homemade sign, yeah. and that's it. And it's just like. Do you put money into your business, or <laughs> there's no reason to, right? There's there's six thousand people in this city. Yeah, yeah, I get that too, you know. But it's nice. I come back and I'm just like, this is it. this is the fucking spot. Yeah, this is where it's happening. It's hot as balls though, yeah. but it's only for three months. Yeah. yeah, the rest of the time, it's amazing. It's a be it's beautiful weather. It's not yeah. bad. All the way through the deep winter and shit. I love yeah. like my friends will be posting on Facebook or something like just six feet of snow and they're fucking trapped and this sucks and I'm yeah. like. Uh, it's four in the morning and I'm barbecuing. Yeah. <laughs> it's only, I mean, the, the only July is the like intoler. Like, it's hard to tolerate July. Yeah. July is always the hottest. Oh man, that's the first. The one. It's 112. I'm gonna call you on that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, July is the worst month. Yeah. I think once you get past July, everything is just kind of. Yeah. Once you get to the end of September. Yeah. I mean, I start singing the you same know. tune every summer. I'm like, fuck this place. I'm out. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, who wants to hang out when you're like this, it? fucking heat warning on my uh my alexa every day it's yeah. just like the heat advisory it's 115 degrees outside today and it's no just like shit. jesus i just stop running in the morning i'm like getting up earlier and earlier and it's like well you know what's the temperature outside 95 degrees six in the morning yeah. it's 95 <laughs> degrees outside that's not right and i go outside and i'm like <gasps> oh run back inside fuck that i'm yeah. not running today I ain't running a while on that shit today. Well, we, i mean knock on wood we've gotten lucky this year we haven't had the terrible winds that usually accompany like oh, these, yeah. these heat waves. And shout out to no humidity. 
I mean, yeah. that's saying. true too. Yeah, the heat Could without the in humidity, like Florida. the dry heat. Yeah, it's a dry heat. I don't give a shit what you say. It's hot. It's hot as fuck. Hot. Though. No. The yeah. dry heat, wet heat. It's fucking miserable. I walked outside uh, with my guest the other day, and I was drinking my protein shake. So I had a little protein shake in my belly, but I've been inside the nice, cool house all day. The, the sun hit me for like 60 seconds. I was just standing outside for a second, and it boiled the fucking protein shake in my stomach. I had to go inside. I was like, I have I feel a good. stomach ache. And I drink these things every day religiously, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't get a stomach ache from them, and I like them. But it's so hot outside. It was like... Four in the afternoon, you know, the hottest point in the friggin' day. And I, it, it literally fucking boiled my goddamn protein shake Jeez. in my stomach. Yeah. I was just like, I gotta, I gotta lie down. <laughs> Go <laughs> outside for 60 AC. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's measurable. In Vegas, you just have to hibernate for, you know, the yeah. three months where it's super yeah. hot. Suck it up, pay your high power bill for a couple months. And yeah. Then, yeah. Enjoy the rest. Yeah. Oh, man. No the power no bill is, nice. is well, pretty we, heavy. Yeah. Don't have to turn on the heater in the winter. No, we fight We fight for it every year where it's like, did you turn your heat on yet? Nope. Nope. And it's getting deeper and deeper <laughs> in the winter. Did you turn your heater on yet? Nope. Like, you know, you wake up one morning and it's like you're, you could see your breath and it's like, you know, it's 58 like degrees in your house. You're like, OK, you win. I turn the heater on. Like, ah, <laughs> and then you get that uh, that smell coming through the vents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That like cooking dust the burning smell. Dust. Yeah. 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 The house on fire. Oh, the heater just got kicked on for the first time yeah. since summer. Yeah. yeah. That's always nice. Comparing power bills like what's yours this month? 48. What's yours? 49. Oof, Fuck. I wish. Yeah. No, I got the I got the the fish tank. Yeah. Oof. So I have to keep the house like in the mid seventies year round. It's right. just like the only thing I, I I got that nest thing, so I'll switch it to eco mode. Yeah. It'll save me a little bit of money. Right. But it's like it's constantly kind of kicking well, I mean, the AC. For, for winter, uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty good yeah. set is seventy. I don't know. Yeah. You know. You don't get too crazy in that for the heat because gas is cheap out here. So yeah, exactly. And there's heaters in the fucking tank, so I'm not too worried about it getting too cold in the house. But I always gotta like balance the temperature regularly so that that the fucking thing's not working its ass that's, off. That's been the one thing that stopped me from keeping to get any kind of like when we were talking about the planted tanks, yeah, or the fish tank. I think about how cold I like in the winter because I don't fucking turn the heaters on. I'll open windows. Yeah, you know what I mean. My, it's a it's a fucking freezer in my house. So I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh, shit, do I want ri- to sacrifice, you know, my good months where I'm cold and nice and snuggled? Well, you just up put two heaters in your tank, man. Yeah. I run, a, I run a dual heating system, and so it's like, A, uh, if one of them pops, I got a redundant one so the water won't ever drop. There you go. And I also run them off of a, a independent probe with a control system, too. So it's just like uh, the, the, the mechanism inside the heater isn't controlling the heater. The probe turns the power on and off for the heater so even if that thing faults and it's like i'm gonna just fucking cook everything it's like no you're not because you can turn on as hot as you want the second the temperature of the water turns a certain degree the probe turns the fucking thing off there you go and that works really good for keeping the the temperature up right. and so it's like an initial investment but then you're like i don't have to fucking worry about yeah. this and you can keep the house a little cooler nice yeah Yeah, because i like i I get it as cold as possible that's my favorite thing about a hotel room is like fuck i'm not paying this power bill oh see how well this thermostat goes you know last especially in the summer dustin hates us for tours we played in san diego uh we were playing down in san diego and and we stayed at a hotel and first thing we do because we're all staying in the same room they had they had the a bedroom and then they had like a bunk bed out in the other room it was kind of a cool little hotel and uh so there was six of us in the room because Chris Story came down with us and uh, we were in the bedroom and he just cranked down the air and they were all sleeping out in the bunk beds and stuff and uh, uh, Chris Story oh boy uh, sleepwalks so he sleepwalks I didn't know he sleptwalked and uh, I was trying to go to sleep it's like two in the morning and uh, I fall asleep and I'm laying there, and then I hear this noise, and the door between the two rooms is closed. And uh, I look over, and I can just see a silhouette of somebody standing in the glass door. And, like, the door, like, cracks open a little bit. And I go, who's there? And no response. And I, go, like, smack Thomas. I'm like, who's standing in the doorway? And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, he just goes, go back to bed. And, like, the door closes and, like, nothing happens. And uh, so I go back to sleep. I'm not thinking anything about it. And uh, 
all of a sudden I hear a noise and I like open my eyes and there's just Chris standing over me oh, and he's like standing there and he's going like this <laughs> and his eyes are closed but I don't know and I like just like seeing that like a foot from your face like when yeah. you wake up I was just like what the f- what the what's going on yeah and rave and he, <laughs> and he wakes up and I'm like what the and it, it's Chris and he's standing there like got like no sleep the whole night and uh four in the morning rolls around I'm back asleep and all of a sudden the, the other goombas from the other room come in shake us awake and they're like we're gonna go to Denny's you ready to go eat and we're like no four in the morning yeah. and then we wake up in the morning and we got the room frozen out it's just freezing there he's got it crank down to like 65 and uh Dustin had come in on his air mattress in the middle of the night and he's sleeping on the floor and he's in a sleeping bag and we wake up and he's shivering down on the floor and he's like, why is it so cold in here? <laughs> he, Meanwhile, we're sitting there like, this yeah. feels great. It's amazing. Know your, <sighs> I don't know what your problem is. But <laughs> that, was a, that was a funky trip, too, because, like, they went out, you know, late, like, and hit the hotel bar or something. And Nick, our drummer, had passed out <laughs> in, the, in the bathroom. I mean, you know how it is. I mean, you've done it. it shit, oh, yeah. Shit gets weird. You know what I mean? It's fan- Six it's- dudes in a room, and you're in another town, so shit gets weird. It's but- usually funner than, like, the actual show stories. Oh, yeah. All the no, crazy the shit that happens. No, the show was whatever, but the whole, you know, everything else that happened, you know, was great. So he's, he's dead to the world. You know, he's out on the tile floor, which I'm sure feels great when you're hammered. Mm-hmm. And we're like wake up you okay like let's put him in the recovery position like he's fine and like sometime in between the whole like sleepwalking <laughs> wake up you know because i every time he he woke up to that he I, I heard him like and he was 50 pounds heavier probably back then so you got this big bear like next to you like what the fuck is that what's that i'm like huh what <laughs> so in between those weird like sleepwalk wake-ups i kind of like rolled over and i'm like checking to see what time it was and i all of a sudden Room's dead silent. I hear, oh, fuck. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And our drummer, Nick, bursts out of that bathroom door. And I swear to this day, I think in his mind, he was like, he woke up, freaked out about, like, how long have I been in there? And it's like, the way he walked out of there was, like, to try to play it off. Like, like nothing he, happened. Like, he wasn't in there for eight hours, you know what I mean? He's just, like, walked right through the bedroom, like, like What's no, up, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm cool. Everything's cool. It's fine. No, no, no big deal. Oh. Uh, playing it off yeah but he was i mean he was done and that room you know what i mean it's you know how that goes it shit gets weird we had an amazing fish taco truck out there i think it's called mm. kiko's in san diego i love leaving, fish tacos leaving um, leftover fish tacos in a hotel room overnight is a bad with idea with six bad, dudes you know what i mean all that body heat and then those in the morning it was like woke Stank. up like oh six dudes in a hotel room stink already yeah it was ripe in that room yeah yeah but yeah, that, like you said, those you know that's funner than the forty you know forty minutes of getting your shit on and off and playing the show and then getting off. It, it, oh yeah, it's wild. To load up, load out. I mean, I'm always dead after I play a show. After I play a show, I'm just like, I want to go to bed. I'm <laughs> yeah. tired. <laughs> I've been yelling. Feel Leave like you I, on the stage. Feel like I ran a marathon when I'm up on stage. Oh yeah, it's like man. drenched in sweat. And everybody's like, oh, let's go party. I'm like. One second. <laughs> Let me hang out for a little bit. Yeah. We used to always go see Cannibal Corpse down in San Francisco. Yeah. And there's nowhere. To, and when you go see a band in San Francisco, uh, there's nowhere to put the fucking bus, right? <laughs> so they just oh, put shit. it. They put it right in front of the venue, or they put it on the side of the venue. Yeah. I, we used. To, we were very keen on this. We we're like, we're seeing all the fucking shows in San Francisco because the band has to just walk out on the sidewalk, there and you're go. like, so you you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you spark that fucking blunt up, and you see them. <laughs> you know, they're like. <laughs> I smell it. Yeah. I smell it. Hey, guys. <laughs> We're over here, bud. We're over here. Yeah. You know, and, uh, I'll bracket. So, but no, we, we would go see Cannibal Corpse all the fucking time down in, uh, in San Francisco, and we end up fucking kicking it with them all because they're super cool guys, and they would just chill and talk to the whole crowd on the sidewalk uh, right in front of their bus for, nice. like, at least an hour, you know, ma- yeah. usually longer. Yeah. And they, I mean, they'd be there till they're like, we gotta, we gotta fucking go. Our driver's gonna drive us to the next town, basically. Yeah. So, the nicest fucking, they're up on stage just talking about, I'm gonna fucking murder you and rape your corpse. And then they're just the nicest guys in the hey, world. How's it going? Corpse grinder, right? George Fisher. Yeah. 
he comes off the bus with a scarf around his neck and he's got spectacles on. <laughs> you know, he's been on stage fucking helicoptering. Just go, ooh, I, 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 I don't, I can't even do him justice. Yeah. The for 90 fucking minutes, he's just growling like a demon and screaming like a fucking banshee. Yeah. And then he comes off sipping his tea. He's got the scarf on <laughs> and the glasses on and he's just, he'll talk like this loud and he's not going to raise his voice anymore because he's got a show to play tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he's the nicest dude in the world oh, yeah. I always cracked me up man but yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't believe they could do that his, uh, his wow videos always, always cracked me up yeah because he's apparently a huge World of Warcraft player oh is he yeah yeah and it just like some interviewer was talking to him and they brought up World of Warcraft and he just got heated like it was just like getting to him because like oh, he was he so plays. into it he was like that was like his he's like I got I got three accounts and I play on tour and like he yep. like he played on tour when he went around and uh, and he was just like hardcore into it and like when that guy brought it up he just like he's like I can't talk about this I can't talk yeah. it's like I get too heated and I was just like man that's that's hilarious like when you see people that you know do music get passionate about other endeavors and it's just yeah. funny especially <laughs> nerdy endeavors like yeah, world like, of warcraft yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. that's what i was because they're people yeah. you know they're yeah. people they're nerds just like yeah. us who like metal yeah. and their band just got bigger and he was yeah. just like yeah, he was like talking about it. he's like anybody wants to challenge me come find like <laughs> shouts out his cow <laughs> character name and he's like you know and he was like whore like talking about the the horde because he was like cause yeah. there's two sides to the game and and he was on one side and he just like hated the other side so passionately <laughs> that it was just like it was uh, that's hilarious like then they give they give these people and he's just like he's going off on this crazy tangent just about this game. game. I'm looking that shit yeah, up later. Watch it. It's hilarious. That's fucking great. I think metal does have like more nerds per capita. I swear. Like we're it's they're all nerds. Yeah. yeah. Either nerds or just total fuck ups. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just those dropout drug yeah. addict fucking guys who just can't get it together. Well, they're like I fit right in. <laughs> where it's like the nicest bunch of guys. Like and that's what's funny about it is because yeah. like you said the 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 difference between the music and you know being on stage and like I'm gonna rip your flesh off ah, yeah. all that shit then you get off stage and everybody's like oh hey man how's it going like how you doing you guys had a great set ah, you know what I mean that's it it's wild oh the yeah difference. there's a lot of the guys that uh, are doing twitch streaming a oh, lot really? of metal artists yeah. A lot of the singers and bass players and uh, the whole band, they'll, they'll be doing streaming on Twitch. They they stream, they play video games and stream on Twitch as kind of a supplemental thing when oh, they're nice. not on the road. It's kind of cool. Uh, the guy from The Browning does it. Uh, oh, really? Uh, Johnny. Johnny Mac McBee. Yeah. And uh, Phil Bozeman, he doesn't stream that I know of, but Phil Bozeman from Whitechapel, I know he plays Diablo. Oh, uh, tight. So, I, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of nerds. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna fucking uh, support my homies, too, since you brought up uh, video game streaming. Fucking quick 10-second thing. Yeah, support sure, Team yeah. Runk, man. My buddies uh, do a Twitch account. They do a podcast. And they're always online playing video games with people. You can get some merch here. My buddy Ray doing his cosplay thing. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. And it's great. He's the Incredible Hulk, right? But he's, he's <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. But, yeah, I just want to support my friends and do that thing, man. Dude, absolutely. You brought it up. Yeah. Yeah, and, you, dude, it's, it's cool because they have, like, stuff like Discord. Yeah. Where now you can go on and just jump online with these guys and play, you know, directly with Discord's, celebrities even. Discord's getting yeah. better. I mean, Discord, yeah. they've increased their, their capacity and they've their videos chat now is... Awesome. Is it? Works great. Yeah. I got I got to get on. I created an account. I'm going to get on and jam with the guys. I've been playing. I've been so wrapped up in this fucking thing and like just making this work and yeah. then moving on to the next phase. Yeah. And I'm almost there where I'm like, oh, we got this, we got a flow going, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. And you can, I mean, there, there's tons of guys that do their podcasts on Twitch as well. Yeah. They stream yeah. it on, on Twitch. You know what I've been noticing? Because I've been going to check out some Twitch stuff. Um, is uh, the fucking app doesn't really work that well. You the know, mobile it, app is kind of it's kind of trash. Trash. Yeah, it's like you go to fucking play a video and it just sits there infinite loading mm -hmm. loop and you're like, re, you know, turn There's off the app. Live streaming and, though yeah. is good. Is the live streaming that better? Yeah, yeah. I used to live stream on Twitch a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, it was fairly easy and it wasn't that bad and, and it and as long as you have a good speed and you got a nice camera and a nice speaker, system, sorry, a nice yeah. mic setup. Yeah. You're gonna be 
rocking and rolling. Yeah, I was thinking about. I, I'm, I, I'm not thinking about it. I'm gonna make a Twitch account for this. I already, I, yeah. like I said, I signed up for it all and everything. Uh, because you got to just put your shit everywhere, right? Yeah, exactly. And Twitch is a great spot to put it. Twitch is huge so. right now. I mean, it's it's massive. I mean, tons and tons and tons and tons of people are watching it. Yeah. Yeah. The more the more places people can access you, the better. I mean, hell, we're on Pornhub somewhere. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> music I saw that there. video. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that like five funny. guys get dirty in the desert or yeah. something like that? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, we put that up there. I was just like, yeah, let's fuck it. Let's, you know, <laughs> it gets traction, it gets traction. And then I, I don't know whatever <laughs> happened to it. To be honest, I couldn't find it the other day because I... Oh yeah, I was like talking to somebody like, "No, you guys aren't." I was like, "No, I swear to God, we are." So I was like, literally typing in that title and like other things like close to it, like, "Oh fuck, five dudes get dirty." Like, no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's fucking great. Pornhub, what a fucking genius thing to just throw your random videos. They were like, "This isn't porn. Get this smut out of here." Yeah. What reported? The There's no cocks in this video. Wasn't there a guy that was doing gun reviews on Pornhub for yeah. a while because so, he got booted off YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. YouTube had their whole weird purge. They, there's there's a lot of gun channels still up, but they're still weird about monetizing those guys. So, That's dumb. Which yeah, I don't get why. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Know. It's that liberal agenda. They you know. They, well, I mean, God, whichever it's ridiculous. Way, whichever way you lean, you know, yeah. do your thing. But you would figure YouTube would see that as like, oh, look at all these views. You're gonna be an yeah. open platform. Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't they're you not s- an open platform no, anymore? No. That's the shame about it. I know yeah. I'm I'm on YouTube right now talking shit about YouTube, but I don't give a fuck. No, <laughs> they're gonna no, they don't terrible. watch my shit. But so yeah, so he he got I think his channel got pulled down or something, and he just he's like okay, he went over to Pornhub, and there was a that's hilarious. There was a movement for a second there, and then the, the, a lot of guys trickled back to YouTube. I don't know how they worked it. You know, they're obviously yeah. getting revenue somehow, but there was a movement for a hot minute where a lot of the big name channels were like, this is where we're going. Yeah, because they're not gonna pull us down. Because look at the other shit that's on this website. Well, and that's what they're asking for directly, right? They're just like literally creating their own competition yeah. out of their discriminatory policies. Exactly. And it's like, why are you going to, you know, put lines on things and, and say this is okay, but this isn't okay? Yeah. It's like, you're that's not your place, man. That's People not your place at all. People should stay open base. Yeah. And I mean, who's who's to de- decide? Who, you're fucking, you're, yeah. you're judge and jury, man. Like, the, exactly. it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's over guns. Like, I like those I, I those gun videos are great man you know yeah. like i was fucking going through cleaning a bunch of guns the other great day and it's like tutorials and stuff yeah it's like it. oh they could show you how to dismantle the whole weapon and exactly yeah, mm-hmm. and, and clean it properly not fuck your gun up yeah and i was like that's really useful shit and like anybody that gets one of those weapons is gonna look it up i don't know but yeah yeah they, they you know they they fucking took down tons of conservative shit too like oh, anybody yeah. that was on there that was you know, doing their thing that wasn't like liberal dis- or democratic. I don't agree with what you're saying. Yeah, they go, oh well, I disagree with that. That's yeah. not my party, yeah. and they demonetize these fucking people, and that's uh, yeah. that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I don't give a fuck what your opinion is. Yeah. That's the that's divide in this tyranny. country is getting ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's getting insane. It, you know, it's it all really from is, one man. side too. It's just like. You know, I don't see a lot of that bullshit coming from the the right side of the conservatives. All yeah. these fucking people that are just like, hey, hate, 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 hate this much. about you. I hate that about you. You're not my fucking friend anymore. Yeah. And it's just like, what the fuck, man? Okay. Yeah. I think and then the others, you go, okay. Yeah. I got into it with my sister. I don't hate you, <laughs> but you can hate me. Right. My sister lives up in Washington, and we got into it. Yeah. Uh, over text message. That's right. And it's just like, she was sitting there, you know, disrespecting my dad which he's a retired police officer yeah and uh and talking about how all cops are bastards yeah it's like like you know dad's yeah. a police officer a retired police officer it's like most it's like, cops <laughs> not yeah. all cops yeah. i'm like what are you uh, what are you talking yeah. about and and it's like uh, see almost seems like she's been brainwashed living up there it's it's yeah. wild how how far in one direction she moved when she moved up there. Well, that's their fucking, that's their game that they're playing too. It's like, if you're not, if you don't think exactly like us, you know, we're going to fucking berate you and put you yeah. out. Yeah. Not just like, oh, you can't hang. It's just like, no, we're going, we're going to cancel your ass. You know, they're, they're, they're so aggressive yeah. and vengeful yeah. and spiteful she and was hateful. Doing that to my dad. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's gross. It's, like your, da- it's your dad. It's disgusting. It's like, yeah. 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 And it's like, I don't give a fuck what the other side even thinks on the, you know, like, exactly. Because, because this side's so morose and just yeah. out of line. And it's, that just it's like, that, it doesn't even, our side yeah. that is just so, against 
being open to anything other than this narrow point of view, their narrow have. point yeah. of view, yeah. but while all still while preaching acceptance and openness and being the most racist people on the planet. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't see, I, I, I don't see any more racist people than the fucking hard left yeah, people they who want to put everything. everybody into, yeah, they want to segregate yeah. everybody into your own little box mm -hmm. and your own little bullshit, all based on the color of your skin. And it's like, didn't we learn in school that this doesn't yeah. matter, you know? And it's, it's like individuals. Yeah. You it's like everybody has basis. a unique experience in this life and sure. Yeah. Like the color of their skin, you, they run into other people in the real world and they're fucking idiots and they do dumb shit to people based on skin color of course yeah, that yeah. fucking happens yeah. you know but you, the response doesn't have to be put everybody in boxes based on skin color right. what exactly. the fuck man yeah. it drives me nuts yeah. see I'm, I'm like I yelling know, and cursing I want to know what happened to the golden rule like what? where did that go treat others like you want to be treated exactly That's, For that sure. should be it yeah. everybody should treat others like they'd want to be treated I yeah, mean man. if you did that it's it's ridiculous get rid of half the problems we're having yeah Well, and I, and I feel like the, the whole the whole quarantine, sick, whatever they, you know, the virus, this created like such a perfect storm. You know what I mean? For oh, you, know, yeah. you got you got you got an election year, so shit's gonna be weird. Yeah. It, every four years, it gets weird. I don't, yeah. you know, you can you can literally That's just look, part of living in this country. You can look back at the news articles. Every four years, it gets weird, and then you've got okay, nobody's working. Yeah. There's no entertainment, so. I feel like everybody's just so frazzled, you know. Everybody's what I mean? glued to their TV. There's so much yeah. stress everybody's going glued on. Glued to you know, Twitter. People everybody's are worried about their jobs, their house, their rent, their mortgage. You know what I mean? So everybody's already on edge. Then you've got you know everything else piled on top of that, and it's just like everybody's at each other's throats. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you got the news too, telling you every day that half the country is trying to destroy the country. Or the other half of the country is trying to destroy yeah, the country. Yeah, you got both sides and just poking the they're fire. They're also telling you that every day that you're going to die from COVID. Yeah. And, you know. It's, it's terror. Just, it's it's just, they just want to fucking terrorize yeah. everybody. It yeah. sucks. And But what's weird, too, though, that I've noticed is that, I mean, it's always going to be overblown wherever you watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's hot spots in the country where shit's getting wild. But, like, for the most part, I have never been, I've never felt more, like, at ease or like everybody I come into contact with or whatever has been overly nice lately. And I don't know if yeah. that's everybody realizing that, fuck, we're all kind of touchy or what it is. But I, you know, every single person I've come into contact with in the last maybe six months, you know, just random, yeah. you know, gas station clerk, this guy, you know, walking past me or whatever, it has been a lot friendlier. And I, I just, fuck, dude, be good to each other. That's neat. I agree. You know what I mean? just got these pockets that are screaming really loud and they got a, you know, an amplifier that's amplifying yeah. their viewpoint and they tenfold. I just, yeah, yeah. I just and wish they the think whole that world they, would think that. Yeah, they think yeah. their opinion matters when they scream it in their echo chambers. And they yeah. think that everybody else thinks like them as well. Yeah. I mean, so many people that just go... Zero people are going to vote for Trump. There's no possible way anybody would ever do that. And it's like, I don't care uh, what your, your side you're on, right? It's just like, obviously, that's not true, right? Yeah. But they're yeah. so in denial about the yeah. world because they blocked every single Trump follower they ever heard anything from, right? right. They're just like, I'm never going to hear anything from that side ever again. Yeah. And so out of sight, out of mind, yeah. right? And they're just yeah. like, oh, it'll be a landslide. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, I really don't believe that yeah, everybody at all. Is turn everybody is blocking everything from... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. you don't see what else is going on, and yeah. it's gonna be, it'll be very interesting. I think there is a huge, uh, a larger majority of centrists and 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 more conservatives that, you know, they don't like either extreme. Right. Yeah. And and you'll see, you'll see them show up in the polls. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully realizing too that this whole you know, left side, right side is just ridiculous it's in general. Joke. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? That. They don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I've always they tried to care. stay right in the Neither, fucking middle yeah. and observe yeah. and go, oh, um, I guess this is the lesser of the two evils this time. Right, yeah. and that's the worst and that's part That's all you get. It. Yeah. That's all you get. Garbage and garbage, yeah. right? It's just like fucking old pedophile well, or psycho fucking retard, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just like uh, neither one of these is a good leader. We don't need either of these things, right? right? And But... What are you supposed to do? You can't, if you throw your vote down the middle and vote for some random person that's not in one of those two things, you threw your vote away. Yeah. You're not yeah, voting I mean, for that person you got to think about it, too. You, you got one guy that's trying to make 300 and 
three hundred sixty million people happy. Yeah, it's like that'll never happen. It'll never oh, happen. Oh no, yeah, no. you're you're lucky so, to get half. God, look at that's look, why look it at, always does come down to the lesser evil because you, you can't make everybody look happy. at the way they you never will look at the way uh, you know it, like it was Bush and Obama. You saw how they looked like on inauguration for the next president. You know what I mean? Yeah. They looked horrible. That's the hardest job after, on the fucking after, planet. It's know, impossible. After, Nobody can do it right. Yeah, after yeah. all that stress, you know, they're like mm. handing off the thing like, thank God. I know, right? Take Let me out of here. Me. Like, good luck. It's gonna <laughs> suck. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I imagine that conversation has to come up like, <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. Here's the keys. Nobody here you can, go. Nobody Half the country's gonna hate you. Nobody will ever be able yeah. to fucking handle that position. It's no. a ridiculous position, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, we are fucking totally out of time. That caught up to me super fast. All right. That's a good place to end it on, I nope. guess. Uh, yeah, if I can be good to each other. Be yeah. good to each other. Exactly. That's really the point, right? It's just, just like friendly. stop hating everybody, no. man, because it doesn't get anywhere, and it's only going to alienate people against you. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. Quick shout outs to anybody while we're uh, at it. Quickly. <laughs> Deathcore dad memes and uh, who else we got? Mm. Crash burn guitars. Crash burn guitars. Absolutely. Sims glass. Fucking a. Perfect. I dig it. All right. well, this has been to the fullest. Peace. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.